Kohei Shizaki Kani, a female swordsman known as Assault Revolver. From a young age, she challenged and won many dojos, but this was not just bragging. She fought like a wind god. However, when a girl sleeps and her body is embraced by the rays of the sun, her face looks like an angel, so childish and innocent. The guy's name is Hayashizaki Kazuki. He's 16 years old. As a child, he was adopted by the Hayashizaki family. And from that day on, Kazuki is a freshman at the Paladin Academy. Now he is trying to wake Kani, who does not respond to knocking and calling in any way. The young man has to move on to the next step, and he decided to enter the room. The younger sister is sleeping soundly. Kazuki looks at her sister's angelic face. She sniffs sweetly and childishly. The young man listens and enjoys. When he comes to his senses, Kazuki shakes his head and tells himself that this is not the way to do it. Now is not the time to be charmed by your little sister. The boy reaches out his hand to her, wanting to wake her up. But suddenly there is a scream. Kani flies at him using Hayashizaki's special technique, Deadly Temptation. The younger sister made a grab with her hands and feet, and ended up on her brother's back. Kani, laughing, asks Kazuki not to be embarrassed, but Kazuki stammers and replies that it looks strange. They seem to stick together. The young man tried to throw his sister off, but he failed. Kazuki believes Kani is using magic. The boy asks him to stop snuggling up to him, but the younger sister screams so that he does not reject her pure love. Blushing and embarrassed, he asks Kani why she likes to wear it. Realizing the trap his hand was in, Kazuki was covered in a layer of sweat. Kani looks at the guy, hoping to get what he wants. There's nothing to be done. The enchanting aura is stronger. Kazuki decided to move from words to actions. He stood up abruptly. Kani fell off his shoulders. Falling to the floor, the little sister burst into tears, making a face like a lost puppy. Kazuki picked up his sister from the floor. The girl said she was just distracting him in order to prepare. She calls it Hayashizaki's secret art, princess skating. This technique was not so easy to perform, but, as Kani had hoped, her brother got caught in it. So the girl can't move, so Kazuki, according to his sister, should help change her clothes. The guy is dressing up his younger sister. Instead of revealing clothes, Kazuki put on a uniform that suits her very well. Kani drew attention to her brother's outfit, which is very becoming. Kani is thrilled that her brother looks good in a new uniform. The younger sister was led in the wrong direction and she began to think about a gentle brother in an elegant jacket. She wants Kazuki to make the best impression. The guy asks her to calm down, picking up her weapon from the stand. Kani says that, instead of her uniform, she wanted her brother to pick up something more revealing. Although she is his sister, her honor is at stake. The girl has two weapons on her belt together. They're almost ready to go. Kani noticed out of the corner of her eye that her brother's sword was still in place. They are standing in a spacious room. Kani asks her brother if he is going to carry a sword with him. After a short silence, Kazuki looked away from his younger sister. He said he wouldn't because he didn't need fencing anymore. Kani noticed that there was a riddle on the guy's left hand. She does not understand why she appeared at her brother's, because, as she knows, only women can have this sign. Each owner of the riddle must join the magic division and sign a contract with the diva. The magic division. Kishigakun State Academy has two divisions, the magic division and the swordsman's division. Hayashizaki Kani, a swordsman girl from the swordsman's division and Hayashizaki Kazuki, a paladin boy from the magic division. It happened 15 years ago. Humanity has awakened a new power called magic. This was due to a secret organization that researched the evolution of mankind. Behind the society's back, using alchemy, 15 years ago their labors bore fruit. It looked like a raspberry-colored fruit. The Philosopher's Stone. That's when the mysterious alchemist appeared, who began mass production of Philosopher's Stones. This mysterious stone was implanted into the human mind to awaken the power of magic in them. The appearance of the Philosopher's Stone changed the world order. Every part of the body became covered with magic. All physical attacks and weapons were useless. This so-called magic barrier could only be broken through with a magic enchanted sword. The world has entered a new war of sword and magic. The structure of the police and the army has also changed. A special organization known as Kishiden was created. And Kishiden has opened her own academy in Japan, where Kazuki will be studying in the magic division from today. Brother and sister are walking past the shops. Kani asks if her brother really wants to join the magic division. Kazuki was already tired of answering this question. He asked her in response how many more times she was going to bring up the issue. Little sister, looking at her brother, sees that he wants to join the division. Kani also says that being branded by a diva is very disgusting. The guy stretched his hand into the sky and looked at the mark left by the diva. He himself wonders why she gave him this brand. 
there is a subconscious mind in the depths of a person. It is as big as the sea. The lower part of this sea is called a storm, through which all mankind is connected. A storm is a huge space consisting of magic and living beings hide in its depths. With the help of summoning magic, creatures from a storm can be summoned to the real world. They are no different from gods or demons from mythology. They are called divas. Some divas choose a person and mark them with a brand. The brands are under strict government control. The signing ceremony will change the stigma into a stigma. Only a person with stigma can become a paladin. Kazuki says that people with a stigma are required to join the magic division. If he could, he'd rather become a swordsman. Kani grumbles, repeating his words that his brother is entering the magic division. She can't accept it. She doesn't know how else to resolve their dispute. Turning to him, she screams that her brother was the only good enough opponent for her. Her face was flushed. She asks the young man to understand that she is not his older sister. She screams and asks me to stop addressing her like that. Kazuki will always be the brother she loves and respects. But it's true, Kani was born before him. At that time, he was an orphan and did not even know his origin, and Kani had no friends at all. And when Kani's mother died of an illness, the guy was accepted into the Hayashizaki family. Since then, an amazing bond has formed between them, an older brother and his annoying younger sister. People can get branded when they turn 14. When Kani turned 14, nothing happened. But the next year, Kazuki suddenly had a stigma. After this incident, he finally found out that he was younger than his sister. Kani angrily replies to her brother that this does not change the relationship between them. She is much stronger than her brother, but knowing that she is older, it upsets her. Kazuki laughs and says that everything is fine. It's all settled. He tells the mentor to take care of her. The girl was outraged that he called her a mentor. She wanted to be outraged and demand that he not call her that. But Kazuki took Kani by the cheek. She howls and asks her brother not to play with her little sister's cheeks. Tears are welling up in her eyes. Kazuki holds his sister's cheeks and says that she is the strongest swordsman, and he will become the strongest magician. So her brother will always be her rival. His summoning magic will overcome her magic sword. He asks you to be ready for this. Embarrassed, Kani looked away and asked her brother to become the strongest magician, because Hayashizaki always keeps his word. Their conversation is distracted by a guy running as fast as he can. He calls out to the president. There must have been some kind of incident. He stopped and says that he has finally found the president. The girl's phone was disconnected. After catching his breath, Torazu calmed down. Kani reports that he is showing the newcomer the neighborhood. The girl doesn't want to be disturbed. Torazu understood now. His face was replaced by a frown. He noticed the male uniform of the magic division on the young man. So the rumors are true. The president says it's her brother. He is very strong and she is proud of her brother. From these words, it seemed that her nose grew straight, like Pinocchio's. Tarazu doesn't understand what she's talking about, because the guy is only in his first year. Fun and fun were replaced by seriousness. Kani asked her friend about what had happened and the reason why he needed her. Torazu reports that there was a fight between the magic division and the swordsman's division in the garden behind the school. This caused a real scandal. Kani asks him that, having the third rank, he can't even handle it. Torazu asks in response about how to fight alone against the magic division. Turning to Kazuki, she apologizes to him. The girl ordered to address her as the president, so her brother obeyed and wished her luck. At the Kishigakan State Academy, the president of the student council is determined by strength. Since Kani was the strongest in fencing, she was appointed president. The girl went to the scene, not forgetting to take Thoraz with her so that he would show the way. Kazuki looks after her fleeing sister. You can rely on Kani. So, the guy lost his guide. He hopes that he will easily find a place on his own. Looking at the building opposite, the boy thought that there might be a magic division there. Kazuki, walking down the alley, hears whispers around him. It's just like Torazu said. There are many rumors about him. Some of the girls think the guy is cute and someone is a barbarian. Some people believe that some kind of mistake has occurred. The young man got into a scandalous place. He's wondering if he's going in the right direction or not. Kazuki wants to ask someone who doesn't know him. The boy's eyes were covered with palms with the game guess who it is. Kazuki realizes that the voice belongs to a girl. The girl, clinging tightly to the boy's back, asks him to answer her. Kazuki says that even if she says so, he has no idea who it is. The girl asks him to hurry up. If he doesn't guess correctly, he won't get his prize. Kazuki found himself in an unusual situation. The prize will be a pair of tickets to the hot springs. If he answers correctly, he will go with the girl. She started the countdown, thus hurrying Kazuki to answer her question. Time is running out, but the young man is silent. 
giving up, she lets him turn around and take a good look at her. A long-haired girl with a bow on her head stood in front of him. She had a beautiful uniform with a gorgeous bow on the collar. Kazuki has no idea who this beauty is. She greets him, saying that this is their first meeting. The girl apologized for playing a prank on the guy. Kazuki was covered in a layer of sweat. She is glad to meet him. The girl's name is Atanashi Kagwa, a 16-year-old girl who will always be there and cry if you don't call her by her first name. She's the guy's mentor. Kazuki wanted to introduce himself, but Kagwa interrupted him, shouting that she knew that he was the younger brother of the student council president who had received the stigma. The boy was surprised that Atanashi knew his older sister. The girl laughs, saying that they are good friends. Since he is so special, the girl decided to check him out. Grabbing his hand, Kagwa shouts that, in any case, Kazuki will become her friend. More precisely, they will be friends. To be honest, she reminds me of someone. The stone-faced guy agreed, which caused the girl to jump for joy, shouting that she was his number one friend. Kagwa calmed down and asked Kazuki to call her by her first name. The girl wants to leave the honors behind. The young man is a little uncomfortable, so he wants to call her a mentor. Adonashi, shaking his hand, says that she has forgotten about her title of mentor since this year. Suddenly, she approached Kazuki's face and asked what he was doing on the outskirts of the town. Hayashizaki is panicking. The girl is too close. Her face is too close and she smells good. Embarrassed by the small distance between them, Kazuki says that his sister decided to show him around, but she was distracted by urgent business. With burning eyes, Kagwa said she would take over his sister's job. Grabbing his hand, the girl led him forward. Kazuki follows her. The main attraction is the Sol Seal Castle. Initially, the boy wanted to enter the magic department, but he just follows his mentor. The beautiful one San is holding his hand. It calms his wounded heart. His mind, his mind is calmer now than Gandhi's. Kazuki will have an interesting school life in the women's magic division. The bell rang. Kagwa looked at his watch and said she wanted to have more fun with her new friend. Turning to him, the girl informs him that the plans are changing. He and Kazuki are walking towards Fountain Square. The guys must hurry, otherwise they will be late for the opening ceremony. National Academy of Knights, Fountain Square. The magic division's entrance ceremony is about to begin. The moderator welcomes all new students. Kazuki stands alone among the girls. Kagwa left him as soon as they reached Fountain Square. While the guy is thinking about where to do his new girlfriend, the presenter announces that now there will be a speech by the president of the student council. The real identity of Atanashi Kagwa is the president of the student council. That's why she knows his sister. The boy suddenly realized that if she was the president of the student council, then Kagwa was the strongest magician of the academy. The Nightmare Bringer by Atanashi Kagwa the president says that mysticism has gripped their world. He is immersed in what they used to consider ancient myths. Suddenly, the gates opened, and magic from a strum penetrated into their world, bringing with it crowds of demons and spirits. This phenomenon is called carcinoma. Japan, America, Britain, Germany, Italy, Russia, and China. These are seven magically advanced nations, each of which has gained power from various legends. But because their country is one of them, the threat of invasion does not become less. Therefore, they continue to prepare for the battle of the worlds. This is not only an international, but also an internal conflict over the illegal use of magic. And the rate at which illegal magicians appear is growing all the time. Invasion, illegal magicians, carcinoma. Fighting these dangers is the purpose of Kishidun's existence. But no one should be afraid, because everyone is here now, in a place where there are enough forces to fight these threats. All of them, chosen to become the 72 Pillars of Solomon, are prestigious cadets of Kishidun, heroes of the new world. Students cannot easily take on all the responsibility. Just a day ago, they were just high school students, so they might not be sure about their own future. Her speech is interrupted by the sound of rattling wheels. Turning towards the source of the sound, fear appeared on the student's face. There was a chain dragon on the platform with wheels, which was about to break loose to devour and destroy everything around. Everyone is wondering what the president is going to do. Pulling on the magical threads, the girl tells the dragon to continue his heavenly destiny. After saying a whole prayer, the dragon freed himself from the shackles, destroying the lands around with his paws. The students are in a panic and do not understand why the president released the prisoner. The dragon stands on all its paws and looks straight into the crowd. All the newly arrived students, looking at the sharp eye, begin to be afraid. The mighty creature senses the fear of humans. He lets out an angry roar that would make everyone run away in time. Shemha Meforesh, 
her strength, her thirst for omnipotence. According to this contract, she must obey her orders and show her strength. Her name is Asmodeus. She tells Sweet Cargo that she should not be called only as an exhibit in the Circus of Freaks. Nevertheless, the president continues to say that the thoughts that make her breasts burn are designed to turn this world into a living hell. She is a demon of unholy desires, personifying disaster, bringing madness. Tabo orders Guernica to go to another world. The president is attacking a powerful dragon, which is now being consumed by darkness. The newly arrived students did not budge, including Kazuki himself. They are closely watching what is happening. The dragon begins to dissolve into the smallest particles floating in the air. Only smoke remained from his body. Kagwa reports that this is a summoning of magic, a power that all newcomers will soon master. She asks everyone to ask themselves, what should this power be used for? This is a power that can only be wielded by those who sincerely wish to bring justice with all their hearts. They need a thirst for justice. And, having finished his speech, Kagwa says that she is glad to welcome everyone to the magic division. While the crowd is cheering, after such a solemn speech by the president, Kazuki stands aside and wonders why he, a simple man, is destined for such a powerful force. Justice, peace, just incomprehensible ideas. Kazuki just wanted to make the father who adopted him happy. And everything. The guy wonders if, as Kagwa said, he will be able to take responsibility for this evil force. Kani is calling his brother. He asked if she had completed her assignment. The girl laughs and says that those fools who started the fight are thoroughly offended. Someone turned to Kana-chan. So they met Kazuki and Kani. At first they smiled sweetly at each other, and then they started talking about what had happened. Kagwa wanted to start a quarrel between the magic and fencing divisions, but stopped, calling this event too violent. Kani replied that the one who started the fight and provoked the opponents first was a student from the magic division. Even so, Kagwa believes that this is not a reason to resort to violence. If this continues, it will be too difficult to maintain the already fragile friendly relations between the divisions. Kazuki feels the ticklish atmosphere. Kani does not understand why a student of the magic division started a fight instead of practicing the art of summoning. The sister decided to find out how long her brother had known Kagwa. The girl wanted to show him the area. Grabbing Kazuki's hand, Kani led him away, telling him not to go out with this girl. My sister decided to continue her journey around the university. They were stopped by Kagwa, who shouted that she also wanted to accompany him. Kagwa says that Kazuki is essentially a student of the magic division. Kani can't escort anyone from the magic division, so the girl wants to keep an eye on him. Kani asks to hold her horses, because she has already agreed with her brother about this. The girl demands that the rival does not interfere in their personal life. Kagwa says that a student of the magic division should be accompanied by the appropriate student council president. My sister says that the fencing division is more suitable for Bharat. Kazuki wants to go to his class alone. Of course, he already knew this, but there are only girls in the class. There is no turning back, so the guy will just fight his fear. In class, he looks like a white crow, which everyone discusses in whispers. A girl burst into the classroom, calling everyone present trash. The boy was stunned, and some girls admire the woman, comparing her to a cute doll. She, like a commander of a military division, orders to obey. Her name is Lisa Westwood. She is a graduate of the first country to be penetrated by magic, Britain. For the next year, she will train the newcomers to become real paladins. She also did not forget to tell them to prepare in advance to thank her for this. Looking at the class, she says that all the students will be problematic. Those sitting in the audience do not dare to interrupt the teacher. Lisa Westwood says that before they bother her, she will say one thing. The guy sitting in the office does not deserve the attention of the girls. She called Kazuki an E-rank trash and ordered him not to overestimate his importance of being here. The young man did not remain silent after such a statement and replied that he did not overestimate anything, and also did not plan to have an E-rank for a long time. The teacher liked this answer. She hopes that the guy will keep his word. As for the others, she asks not to squeal, as girls usually like it, just because a guy is studying with them. If you have time for a guy, then it's time for training. Lisa says that in any case, out of the whole class, he is the only one with an E-rank, and a couple of others in the rest of the classes. The teacher noticed that there were a couple of A-rank students in the class. The girl's name is Amasaki Mio, has an A-rank. She is the daughter of the noble magical family of the House of Amasaki. Mio is going to become the strongest magician of Kishiden, the president of the student council. She won't lose to anyone and is glad to meet everyone. Lisa Westwood, approaching the upstart, reminded her that she had not asked her to introduce herself. She asked the student to close her mouth and sit down. 
Now Lisa calls Mio a narcissistic piece of trash. There is a girl sitting behind Kazuki who called everything that happened nonsense. She comments on the upstart. She believes that there is no point in acting out such a scene, since there is no contract with the diva yet. Lisa Westwood confirmed the girl's words. This is another a rank from the class. Her name is Hayakari Kyuki. Kazuki turned around to look at the girl. Kyuki looks like an elf. He had heard what had happened to people with great magical powers. As a result of this force, the physical body has undergone significant changes. They are called elves. She turned to the E-rank, asking about what was on her face. The guy apologized to the girl. He hadn't really expected the elf girl to be so beautiful. With complete indifference on her face, Kyuki asked again about beautiful, saying that he must have meant ridiculous. Exhaling and maintaining a mask of indifference, she advises the guy to say what he really thinks. This is inappropriate, according to the girl. Kazuki shouts that he meant what he said. He repeatedly shouts his words that Kyuki is beautiful. The girl blushed with embarrassment. There was no trace of indifference left on his face. While the guy was shouting at the whole class, Lisa Westwood turned to him like an E-rank trash. She asked the guy what it was. The teacher viciously mocks the fact that the guy hit on the girl right in front of the whole class. Lisa repeats Hayakari's words to the class that the current rank does not matter much. When Enigma turns into stigma, that will be the decisive moment. The signing of the contract with the diva will happen much later. In the meantime, the teacher wants to start with the introduction. She called number one. She wanted to say that. But Amasaki has already introduced herself, so Lisa lets her through. Mio asks to wait a minute because she doesn't agree with this. Lisa Westwood says they already know enough about the glorious daughter of the house of Amasaki. The young man looks at her. Amasaki Mio noticed his gaze and turned around. Her cheeks were flushed. Blonde, pretty Mio. The girl got up from her desk and asked to be allowed to introduce herself again. She is the future president of the student council, Amasaki Mio. The girl is fond of drawing, writing books and sewing. Her specialty, of course, magical arts. Mio, embarrassed, waved at the guy, which, of course, Kazuki noticed. Mentally, he asks not to tell him that they know each other. The whole class is in suspense while Kazuki turns his head to see who the girl is waving at. The boy's behavior made Mio very angry. He wonders if she has confused him with someone else. After that, the performances flowed smoothly one after the other. It took quite a long time before the guy's turn came. He is Hayashizaki Kazuki. Despite the E rank, he will try his best. His hobbies are training, cooking and washing. His specialty is fencing. Mio says that being an E rank is one thing, but practicing fencing is another. He joined the magic division to become a magician, but continues to train with a sword. His swordsmanship doesn't matter here. Lisa says they learn magic here. If he says something about fencing, of course, the reaction will be far from positive. The young man did not understand where such contempt came from. Of course, the summoning of magic at the ceremony was amazing. But compared to Hayashizaki's style, which was taught by his father in Kani, Kazuki considers fencing, which requires a lot of effort in learning, a more refined art. It was Hayakari Kyuki's turn. She doesn't care about anyone present. She doesn't have any hobbies or specializations. The guy turned around to ask something, but the girl barked at him to look straight ahead and not turn around to her. Mio looks at this situation and thinks about Kazuki's words against magic and about the personality of the diva who gave him Enigma. The girl thinks he's an idiot. The contract signing ceremony has finally begun. The newcomers are once again welcomed by the president of the student council, Atanashi Kagwa. She says that the students will now sign contracts with divas. Lisa explains that now everyone will make a subconscious journey to a storeroom and go beyond the identification gate. There will be a meeting with the diva. After receiving a spell from them, the student will facilitate the four steps of summoning and will be able to become a real magician. The summoning process, confirmation, order targeting, activation. However, it is very difficult to delve into the darkness of a storeroom and look for a diva. No one has ever been able to do this in their first year of study. This is more of a test than a ceremony, so students need to try their best. The first person to be called was number one, Amasaki Mio. She responded to this and took a step forward. Everyone is watching this closely. The ceremony is conducted by the president of the student council of the Magic Academy himself. Access, order, targeting. The diva's name is Phoenix, a poet and a magician. The girl was enveloped in smoke, which resembles a flame. Clothes burn right on the body without causing any harm. Neo says that diva is a songbird with a sweet voice, playing with minds. A different look appears on her body. Kazuki noticed that it was a battle dress bestowed on the chosen of the divas. He is watching this process for the first time. Discarts bridges Phoenix. The girl now sees the spell. 
After this process, Neo can now perform a first level summoning. They stop her with a shout, that's enough. The mentor warns everyone that no one should ever make a call immediately after such a deep dive into the Astorum. The president said that it was not necessary if she have learned the spell. In the future, it will be easier to connect with Astorum. Amasaki Mio has returned to her former appearance. She is a little confused. Lisa Westwood congratulates the girl on a successful contract. The guy talks angrily about it. Just like Mio said in class, I just signed a contract with a diva. Looking at her and remembering her face, he wonders if they've met before. A voice pulled him out of his thoughts. Mio, laughing at the guy, calls the 14th number, Hayashizaki Kazuki and asks to take a step forward. The young man, in turn, responded and did as he was told, while standing with his back to Mio. Then he realized that something was wrong. Amasaki was angry about this. Kazuki met with Kagwa. She reminded him of his sister's words, about the enmity between magicians and swordsmen. Kagwa believes that swordsmen and mages will not work together to cover each other's weaknesses. They will never reach their true potential that way. Although no one listens to Kagwa. Looking at the boy, the girl says that he, a swordsman, in a magic school can change this. Kazuki's turn came. He's in a storm. He is interested in what kind of diva will change his life. He is asked if the young man is ready to seize the power that can change the world. After that, Kazuki opened his eyes, repeating the words about the power that can change the world. The young man wonders if this contract with the diva will really give him strength. To be honest, he has no idea how to use it. But if he was chosen, then he will try to meet these expectations. He will put his life on the line and devote himself completely to this. If the diva wants this, then he is ready. The diva's silhouette appears and signs a contract with the young man with the help of a kiss. Kazuki didn't expect this, and neither did everyone else. Kazuki feels the warmth of the lips of the summoned girl. His enigma turned into a stigma. After that, they fell to the ground. The guy turned to her and informs her that the girl is without clothes. Quickly jumping off, the diva ran somewhere in search of clothes. There was a complete commotion. The girl standing next to her does not understand why Leem is riding without clothes and gives her his clothes. Lisa Westwood addresses the diva, saying that she is not one of the 72 pillars of Solomon. She's wondering who she is. The called one replies that Leem is Leem and no one else. She has no idea what the girl wants to know from her. Lisa thinks she's a diva with amnesia. She moved on to another question. Now the teacher is asking what kind of power Leem has. All divas have 10 powers. Leem sweetly replies that she doesn't have anything like that. Leem doesn't have any powers. Lisa Westwood fell into a stupor from this answer. The diva yawned and said she didn't understand anything, but she really wanted to sleep. Saying goodnight, the diva fell behind the ground. Kazuki shouts at her to wait a minute. She changed his life, whether Leem knows about it. He wants to know why she gave him this enigma. Lisa Westwood asks the young man to stop. The guy tells the professor what he needs to know, but the girl doesn't mean that. Drawing the guy's attention to the diva, the teacher says that she is already asleep. Kagwa turned to the professor, informing him that Kazuki had not signed a contract with one of the Pillars of Solomon. Wondering about the illegal contract, the professor replied that they would discuss it at the meeting. In the meantime, the diva will be taken to the medical room. It was Hayakari Kyuki's turn. Her diva's name is Descartes Bridges Weparl. After the full conclusion of the contract, the dust around her dissipated and the rest of the student began to applaud her. Lisa Westwood watches this, realizing that the successful contractors in this class are Amasaki Mio, Hayakari Kyuki and Hayashizaki Kazuki. There are only three of them. The young man is in the medical room, where the sleeping lean was taken. He looks at her, sleeping carelessly. In the end, he signed a contract with an unknown diva, without discards bridges and any power. Currently, contracts with divas, in addition to the 72 Pillars of Solomon, are prohibited. If anyone signs a contract with an unknown diva, they will be recognized as an illegal magician. These measures are due to divas hostile to humans. Once they get the power, they penetrate into the soul of the summoner and capture his body. He tells himself that he's had enough. An incomprehensible useless force fell on him like a bolt from the blue, and now he has to sort it out. The professor and Kagwa entered the medical room. The girls report with a serious look that they have made a decision about Kazuki. Some employees do not trust Lem and, so far, the young man is an illegal magician. They decided that Kazuki and Lim would be under surveillance at the magic school. From now on, they will live in the witch hut. Kagwa introduces the young man to the witch's hut, the home of the student council. It looks terrifying, and Kazuki is going to live there. The building doesn't look as encouraging from the outside as it does from the inside. The witch hut has a stunning interior from the inside. A luxury Kazuki definitely didn't live in. 
The guy looks at the room in surprise, realizing that everything is completely different from what he imagined. Hagwa notices that it is very spacious here. The president explains that, in fact, this is a dormitory. The witch hut has a shared living room, kitchen and bathroom. The girl also says that the cleaning here is carried out by the first year students as a training. The young man said that there was nothing to worry about since he was used to homework. He even likes it. Kagwa is glad to hear that. Lim, sleeping on his back, is calling the guy. She has an emergency. The young man does not understand what she means. Lim asked where the toilet was. He pulled her off his back and asked her to be patient for a while. Kazuki is surprised that divas also go to the toilet. The young man apologizes to his mentor. Kagwa replies that everything is fine. She'll take her to the bathroom by herself. The girl tells Kazuki to stay in a spare room on the second floor and asks him not to touch the doors with nameplates, because there are already tenants there. Holding Liam's hand, she tells Kazuki that they will be holding a welcome party soon and asks him to come down as soon as he changes clothes. The young man listens to what the student council president told him. He enters one of the rooms, but it was not empty. Upon entering the room, Kazuki found Amasaki Mio, who was changing clothes as if nothing had happened. Of course, no one expected to see each other. Apologizing, the guy quickly slammed the door behind him. While he was standing there and did not understand what Amasaki Mio was doing here, another girl came out at the noise. She turned out to be Hayakari Kyuk, who wonders why the E-rank is here. Looking at her, Kazuki, panicking and stuttering, asks what's wrong with her clothes. Kyuk calmly explains that she is just in her home clothes. Then she asks him not to stare like that. After casually visiting Mio, Kazuki stood with his back pressed against the door of her room, for which he paid. Mio flew out of the room, flushed with embarrassment, asking what the E-rank swordsman who had just seen her without clothes was doing here. Face to face, Kazuki tells her to blame the law of meanness because it has nothing to do with it. Kagwa invited him to live here. Mio is here because she has an O-rank. According to tradition, first-year students live with the student council and study with them. The president came to the noise, who does not understand what is happening. Mio turns to her in a rage and asks why the E-rank is here. Kagwa realized that they had already talked about this topic. Of course, a girl might be a little uncomfortable because he's a guy. It was decided that Hayashizaki and Lim would live with them in this mansion. So everyone will have to make friends. This finally finished off Amasaki Mio. For her, this is such a futile existence that she screamed, scaring away the birds nearby. Kagwa says she would like to start their welcome party. Since the vice president is on a mission, they will be waiting for her. Kazuki asked about the assignment and Mio turned to him, calling him E-ranked and lagging behind. After all, he also needed to listen during the orientation speech. She explains to him that there are so-called guilds in which apprentice magicians can help the guards with their work. They form groups, destroy monsters, explore magical worlds and catch illegal magicians. How well they complete their tasks determines the ranks. Duels between students also affect ranks. Huk, in other words, says it's stupid to brag about the current rank or to make fun of it. Kagwa is already in his second year, but the young man is interested in learning about the upperclassmen. Mio asks him if he listens to people at all. The guy is so tired that his head doesn't work anymore. Amasaki says that third-year students travel around the country and visit the branches of the order as interns. So if you catch them, then you can consider it luck. The girl returned to the witch's hut, which she informed everyone in the mansion. Mio and Kazuki turned around to see who it was. The vice president is back. The girl noticed that the freshmen were already gathered in the living room. She apologizes for keeping the newbies waiting. The guy recognized her. She was the one who took out the dragon at the ceremony. So this girl is the vice president of the student council. The girl noticed Kazuki. She approached him, examining him carefully, not forgetting to grab his hand. The vice president excitedly shouts that there is a girl here who looks even more like a guy than she does. Spinning around like a spinning top, the girl only talks about a cool face and a strong physique, comparing it with a real guy. She holds Kazuki by the elbows and the guy, looking into her eyes and addressing her as a mentor, informs her that he is the guy. In the blink of an eye, the vice president was behind the student council president, apologizing for her behavior. She doesn't understand what he's doing here. Kagwa apologizes for the girl's behavior. She explains the vice president's reaction. It's simple, she's afraid of guys. Looking over Kagwa's right shoulder, the girl says that since kindergarten, her classmates were still girls, so she never dated guys. Unceremoniously and unexpectedly, the president pushes the girl, shaking with fear, forward so that she stands up straight and introduces herself properly. With tears in her eyes and blushing with shame or fear, the girl introduced herself. 
Her name is Hashikazi Hikari, Vice President of the Student Council. Lim appeared nearby, saying that the girl seemed worthy of the contract. The young man did not understand what she meant. At that moment, Hikari remembered that she had brought a lot of goodies, which Kagwa was very happy about. The welcome party begins. Kazuki went up to the second floor. He didn't think they would stay so long. Entering his room, the guy realizes that he is now a new student. He thinks these people are a little weird, but he thinks they'll get along. Lim is sitting in his room, who tells him that he is late. Kazuki thought that she didn't have her own room, but she just wanted to talk without prying ears. The young man does not understand what they are going to talk about, because Lim has lost her memory. That's true, but Lim has vague memories of who she is and what her mission is. First, as her contractor, Kazuki has to find out who she is. Lim's real name is the small key of Solomon, Lemageton, a demonic god ruling over 72 pillars. Kazuki is stunned by what he heard. He believed that Lemageton was a magic book that everyone knew about. The diva explained that it is more common for people to see it as a book. In fact, King Solomon was conscripted through a contract with Lemageton, the commander of his 72 pillars. This is Leem's power. The magic of Leem, Goth. Gosha is a medieval rite of summoning demons. The pillars supporting the academy possess all 10 types of magic, 720 in total. Unimaginable power in Kazuki's hands. There is one condition. Just as Leem's subordinate 70, two pillars to his will, so the young man must subdue other people. Otherwise the force will be of no use. In other words, in modern language, Leem says that Kazuki must make everyone fall in love with himself in order to control the force. If, for example, Emasaki falls in love with a guy, then a connection will be established between them and Leem will draw out the power of the phoenix. However, if Kazuki is left alone without friends, then Leem will still be just a useless diva. The diva will not have the strength if he is not unpopular. The young man thinks this is ridiculous. Not really. The divas of Solomon should share their knowledge with people. And when branded magicians come of age, they will need a manager. This is Leem's mission. And the reason she gave him this enigma. She says listen to her Hayashizaki Kazuki. The diva will make him king of the harem. Amasaki Mio, resting in her room, hoped for a touching reunion. It's been five years since that day. She is upset that Kazuki has forgotten her. The young man asked about the king of the harem. Leem explains that the king unites everyone with his power of convergence. Without this, people will not be able to resist the gigantic will that will soon sweep through this world. Kazuki is wary. Apart, people are weak, so they exist to obey the king. This is the mission of Leem and the 72 pillars. And for this you will need a harem, which will not be easy to create in a short time, according to the boy. Not at all. Lemageddon should give him Descartes bridges, suitable for creating a harem. An ornament appeared on his arm. This is nothing but the Ring of Solomon. It hears the hearts of girls, recognizes their feelings and evaluates them. Lemageddon asks you to activate the ring with your magic. A scoreboard appeared in front of the young man, showing all the girls who have divas. These are the measured feelings of the girls that the guy has to seduce. Their liking level is shown on the display. Amasaki Mio has the highest level of sympathy. Kazuki thinks there's definitely a mistake here. He doesn't understand that Mio is the first. She hates swordsmen and makes him look like an idiot all the time. Leem says that when the level exceeds 65%, the young man will receive the key to their hearts. Then he will be able to use the first level of diva summoning. So Kazuki should get that first 65% from Amasaki Mio. It seems difficult to the boy. Lemigaden asks the contractor to relax. This ring, as she said earlier, reflects the changes in the hearts of the girls. They become visible to Kazuki. Success is marked with hearts, failures are marked with shards. If he sees the girls' hearts changing, he can make them happy. Kazuki will be able to seduce any girl. The young man is thinking now that he must fall in love with someone in order to become stronger. He doesn't hate girls and, of course, is interested in them. But chasing for the sake of strength is unfair. The guy asks Leem if the level should necessarily be loving and not friendly. The diva replies that friendship is difficult to create. Making friends with all 72 will be even more difficult than making them fall in love with you. The guy stands his ground and says that he still prefers friendship more than love. Leem stopped reproaching. She says that if that is the king's wish, Lemageddon cannot force it. However, Leem will be watching from a storm. She said everything and said it was time to go to bed, addressing him as a king. Kazuki asked about his own room, but the diva said she would sleep with her contractor and the king. Leem exists because of magic. The closer they are, the more stable her condition is. She wishes good night to the steadfast king. The guy, embarrassed, asked who she called persistent. The king of the harem, just like in a visual novel. But winning people's hearts is not as easy as in the game. Kazuki is not sure that anyone will fall in love with him at all. 
While he was thinking, his phone rattled on the bedside table, notifying him of an incoming SMS notification. It was a message about Canny going to bed and describing what she goes to bed in. The older sister, as always. The next day he makes breakfast. Kagwa said that this mansion is mostly based on freshmen. He thinks that if he tries hard this morning, the high school students will be surprised. Looking at his watch, Kazuki realizes that he still has a little time. Looking into the refrigerator, the boy concluded that there are quite a lot of products here, which may even be enough for lunch. Distracted, Kazuki noticed that Amasaki Mio had already woken up and came to the living room. According to the ring, the girl has the highest level of sympathy. He wished her good morning and wanted to ask for help with cooking, but it didn't work out. Mio didn't even pay attention to the young man and, without answering, walked past him. The guy was a little confused. He was carrying the dish to the table and Amasaki turned around to look at the food. It was Karaj. Karaj is a chicken filet fried in oil. Kazuki says that he lived in an orphanage and the cook taught him how to cook this dish. He was distracted by something. He noticed a heart appeared next to the girl. Solomon's ring reacted. This is the power of Descartes' bridges that Lame was talking about. Suddenly, he realized that Amasaki's favorite food was Karaj. The boy asked her if it was boring to just look at the food and suggested that they try the dish together. Amasaki Mio angrily asks that he wants to make her clean up afterwards. He reminded her that they were a junior and had to clean up here. Sure, the girl says that they are both freshmen, but the A rank is higher than the E rank. Mio says that if she, A rank, has to work for third year students, then Kazuki, as an E rank, must obey her. Crossing her arms over her chest, Amasaki says that the guy should be proud that he cooked her food. The guy didn't like this attitude towards him. He silently turned around and went on cooking. Mio looked at him as he worked. A smile appeared on her face. The girls thank him for the food. Kagwa enjoys the fish. She thought that the young man had fished her out of the pond in the yard. The fish tastes very fresh. Kazuki explained that he just found it in the refrigerator in the kitchen. The fish turned out to be excellent and his work was called excellent. Ikari, tasting the dish, is surprised that the guy can cook so well. Maybe she won't be afraid of guys like that. While they are all having a meal together, Leem's thoughts are fuking at the king who won their stomachs, not their hearts. Kazuki is angry about this and demands that the diva disappear. Solomon's ring only notifies about changes in the hearts of girls. Contractors must attend three subjects, mythology, martial arts, and magic control. As their name implies, myths and legends are studied in mythology. Martial arts teach combat strategies. The standard attacking formation of the order is called from heaven to earth. The control of magic speaks for itself. Amasaki Mio tells the diva to dance with her wings and sow sparks. Let them circle the world of the wind, become arrows flying through life. She asks to spread her wings and strike her enemies. Since they have already signed a contract, Mio and Kyuk have mastered the first level of magic and are honing their skills in more complex summoning spells. The rest of the students also try to sign contracts with divas. As for Kazuki, he has successfully concluded his own but is still not capable of summoning magic, so he is doing something else. The young man, in front of a bucket of water, tells him to spin, spin and gain momentum. He turns the water in a bucket. Professor Liz Lisa told him to train water magic, which was more suitable for him. Apparently, if he learns how to control fire and water, it will come in handy in a real battle. The girls look at how the guy just sits and stirs the water in the bucket. They wonder about the real uselessness of his diva. Kazuki tries to focus. Someone came up and asked what he was doing here. Is needing water in a bucket really an E-rank specialty? Turning his gaze, the boy replies that it is quite difficult. It spills out if you don't focus enough. It's Amasaki Mio who says it's easy to do. Kazuki thinks that the girl came up to him to pick him up. It's easy for an E-rank like her. Mio does not understand how this can be useful to a young man in battle. He might as well stir the water with his sword. A spark of hatred appeared between them. Kazuki asks her what she thinks the sword is for. The blade will rust in the water. Mio replied that it also concerned him. She tells him to stop looking down on magic. Amasaki says that maybe he doesn't care about magic as long as he has the Hayashizaki family sword. On the contrary, she can already use second level summoning magic. It's very easy for her. The boy is stunned by how fast she is developing. At this rate, Mio will reach the 10th level in no time. She proudly says that while the guy is playing with water, she will improve with the phoenix. She will cause explosive fear among all illegal magicians around the world and will become a national heroine. Kazuki asked about the explosion. She's going to leave to train further. If you think about it, the young man was left far behind her. Amasaki finds this a little strange. Looking after her, Kazuki asks himself what she meant. 
In any case, starting tomorrow on weekdays, in addition to housework, the young man is also scheduled to practice magic. Liam, eating Karaj, says that she has heard about him. She greedily eats these filet pieces one by one. It's very tasty for her. This is the joy of living in the reality of mortals. Amasaki Mio proudly says that she has not eaten plebeian food for a long time. Such meat will never appear on the Amasaki family's dining table. She has to condescend to acquire an E-rank servant. Hey Shizaki Kazuki, listening to everything that the girl and Lemigeton say, just smiles silently. He cannot comment on this in any way. He wonders in his mind why they are eating with him again. One of them even materialized to eat. Kazuki decided to jump into the conversation and Mio asked him, addressing him as a servant. He has nothing against cleaning the house, but asks you to stop calling him a servant. The girl still hasn't recognized him as a member of the witch hut, and his cooking has nothing to do with it, so she forces herself to eat it. The boy watches Amasaki greedily eating Karaj and says it tastes terrible. Incredibly terrible. Behind him, the girl says that she is very tasty. Turning around, he saw Hayakari Kyuk, who was having lunch with what the young man had shared. She thanks him for that. Suddenly, Amasaki Mio appeared, who orders not to start talking to anyone else while she is eating with him. The guy apologized for that. Behind her, a classmate asked Amasaki about her friendship with the E-rank. Blushing at such a statement, Mio shouts that everything is wrong. She explained that she was on the student council, and the president had given her a servant. She asks her classmates not to misunderstand this. The girl, upon hearing the answer, calmly exhaled, indicating relief of the situation. The classmates surrounded the girl. They thought that something strange was going on in the witch's hut. One of the girls says that it can't be that a rank joined the student council with an E-rank. And a guy, too. One of the girls asks Mio if she finds it disgusting that they are in the same class with a guy who can't even use magic. Amasaki was standing in the middle of the classroom. Kazuki was sitting behind her, listening to what was happening. She agreed to the words of a classmate. Mio added that they, magicians, do not need ostentatious blades. Besides the fact that the young man is an E-rank, he also called fencing his strong point. At first, Kazuki didn't react to this in any way. The girl then said that, compared to her phoenix, Hayashizaki's style is just garbage. She also said that in this school, swordsmen are no different from cavemen waving sticks. These words became a knife in the back. The same thing happened during his performance. He doesn't understand why Mio mentions his family. If she wants to make a fool of him, fine, but insulting people close to him is too much. He would have used physical force if the opponent had been male and not female. Their eyes met and Amasaki asks him if he's going to answer something or if the guy is going to put up with it because he has nothing to say. Someone is talking to girls who are angry at a young man. It's a diva who asks them who gave them the right to speak. Calling them nobodies, the diva reminds them that they have not yet mastered even the weakest summoning magic. It was the Kazuki diva who materialized to talk. She reports that their king's swordsmanship is a hundred times stronger than all the girls combined. The diva offers to test the guy if they are in doubt. Leem said she didn't remember much, but she was sure of one thing. Although Leem doesn't know why she chose Kazuki, the fact remains. The guy is far from weak. She whispers in his ear that it has nothing to do with the Ring of Solomon, nor with the level of conquest. After all, Kazuki is eager to meet them on the battlefield. He asks himself the question of wanting to fight a magician just as a swordsman. He is a magician and must put aside his swordsman's habits. The girls whom Leem insulted ask what they are whispering about with the young man. Kazuki can't afford to make fun of his loved ones anymore, that's why he went so far. He wants to make them change their minds about swordsmen. The guy stood in front of Amasaki Mio and, in response to her insults, he says that he has to challenge her to a duel. If Kazuki wins, she takes back all the words condemning the Hayashizaki family. The girl answered him softly that the young man had not changed at all since then. She accepts the call and says she will wait for him after school. Amasaki Mio and Hayashizaki Kazuki ask Kagwa-san for permission to duel. The president does not understand the reason for their discord, because they should not fight among themselves. Someone is shouting that this is what was expected of the young man. Kani screams that the time of battle has come and she wants her brother to show the magicians a master class. Now she understood. The sister believes that Kazuki wanted to destroy the magicians from inside their division. Such a cunning plan will show them all the power, as Kani thinks. Kani hands his brother his sword Dufu, which means a breath of wind. She took it in case Kazuki needed it. Kazuki's sword, Dufu, the invincible blade of ancient Kamakura, restored with the help of alchemy. Legends say that, due to its sharpness and strength, it is able to cut steel. 
It was given to the young man by his adoptive father in recognition of his coming of age. Kagwa says that she has not yet allowed the duel to take place, but she was interrupted by the president of the student council of swordsmen. Kani reminds that the duel must be approved by the president of the student council. If he doesn't do Kagwa, he will do Kani. While the sister asks her brother to try his best in a duel, a rumor has already spread throughout the academy about the upcoming battle of the magician and the swordsman. It was decided that an unplanned duel would take place at the University of the Magic Division. There were a lot of people gathered around the playground. Hayakari Kyuk acts as a second in the duel between Amasaki Mio and H. Payashizaki Kazuki. The girl announces the beginning of the battle. They were given the command to start the battle. The young man rushed forward because he was sure that he would cover this distance in five seconds. Mio activates Barrett. Kazuki sees this attack and easily dodges it. The girl does not understand how this is possible. It's easy for a young man. Neo reactivates Barrett. My sister tells me that an ordinary swordsman can predict the intentions and movements of an opponent. Hayashizaki's style is also capable of reading magic streams. If the enemy's transition from an action to action can be predicted, the enemy's attack speed does not matter. Hamasaki Mio's chances of dodging will evaporate when the blade leaves the scabbard. Kazuki was as close as possible to his opponent and was already preparing to strike. Amasaki Mio didn't even have time to react to being attacked. From one blow, the girl flies away. Amasaki says the spell out loud. Rays of light went across the ground towards Kazuki. The patterns combined to form a huge pentagram under the guy's feet. Flames appeared from the ground like geysers, which were supposed to burn the boy to ashes. She was shocked. Heishizaki Kazuki was standing on the same ground where the fire was spouting from, unharmed. The girl only had time to think that the enemy had again evaded her magic, as she began to be covered with numerous attacks. The second stopped the duel. The girl announces that Heishizaki Kazuki has won this fight. The people watching the battle closely were amazed. Kani has demonstrated that many underestimate swordsmen. People are too passionate about divas and have forgotten their true strength. She tells Kagwa that she is looking forward to the next inter-division competition. Kani and Kagwa will have a good time there. Startled, Amasaki Mio screams that she hasn't given up yet. Kazuki shouts for her to calm down and finally admit that Heishizaki's style is not weak. The girl refuses to do this. She believes that this style of swordsmanship is weaker than her summoning magic. She asks how Kazuki could not remember her. Her tears are dripping on her feet. The girl asks to be left alone. She shouted that she lived in Nanohan's house with him. Nanohan's house was an orphanage. Kazuki lived there until he was adopted by the Hayashizaki family. There was a girl who always followed him around like a little sister. The guy realized that her name was Mio. He concluded that since they had met again, the young man had been hurting her. She sobs and screams that Kazuki abandoned her, left and forgot about the girl's existence. The guy is standing in front of her, sitting and sobbing on the ground. He feels terrible. He thinks he's terrible. Amasaki got up from the ground and wiped her tears. The girl told Kazuki to take note that she would never forgive Hayashizaki's family for taking Kazuki away from her. Amasaki Mio returned to the witch's hut. Kazuki came to her door and informed the girl that dinner was ready. But all he hears from behind the door is that she doesn't want to eat his food. Without any warning, Hayashizaki enters the room where the girl was whimpering while lying on the bed. He orders her to eat his food. A heart-rending scream rang out throughout the witch hut. They turned away from each other. Mio wrapped herself in a blanket and asks about the fact that the guy is worried about her even now. Kazuki said he was worried. He really couldn't let her skip dinner. Amasaki thinks that the young man still cares about her. The girl says she's still mad at him, so she doesn't want to eat his cooking. Then Kazuki suggests another option. He is ready to become her servant again, as he was before. Kazuki, after making a bow, addresses Amasaki as a lady, informing her that the servant has prepared a meal and asked her to get dressed quickly. The next day, Amasaki Mio made Hayashizaki bento. Although he is her servant, she lost to him yesterday. Opening the bento, the young man noticed that the dish was karach. Mio asks about how the dish was seasoned at Nanohan's house. She has never been able to cook karaj properly. Kazuki agrees to cook karaj together next time provided that the girl wears a maid costume. She asks what he is happy about, believing that cooking with his mistress makes him excited. The classmates think they are friends now. Kazuki believes that the girl cannot be completely honest, but someday they will become friends again, as they were back at Nanohan's house. Suddenly, the young man noticed a ray from his ring to the girl's heart. Kazuki has reached the 65th level. He has received the key to her heart. The young man now understood which key Lim was talking about. Amasaki Mio and Hayashizaki Kazuki go shopping and buy food for cooking. 
The girl says that he pretends to be cool. Neo and Hayashizaki cook in the kitchen. The younger brother cuts the vegetables, and Mio-san puts them in a bowl. Their hands touched, and they were immediately embarrassed. From behind, from around the corner, the president and vice president are watching them. Hagwa thinks they look like a couple of newlyweds. Ikari thinks it's cute, because she hasn't given up on something like that herself. He holds out a spoon with something for the girl to taste. After trying it out, Mio began to look happy, because it was very tasty for her. Amasaki shouts that she will name the dish Golden Mio Saga Curry. Kazuki thought about the fact that the dish would be a little sweet for others. He turned towards the doorway and called Hayakari Kyuke. The girl looked out and asked what happened. The young man offers to try the curry and holds out a spoon. Kayoyuk says Kazuki shouldn't make it just for her. He holds a spoon with curry and waits for her to taste, because he wants her to like the dish too. Hyuk agreed and said that the curry is a little sweet, although the taste is very good. The girl is smiling. Hagwa came into the kitchen, who needs to talk to Mio and Kazuki. It's about the competition between the divisions next week. This is a grand event in which the magic and fencing divisions come together in demonstration duels for the entertainment of newly enrolled students and ordinary citizens. The president of the student council informs that the competition between the divisions will begin next Sunday, and they need to choose one newcomer. Amasaki Mio wanted to volunteer, but Kagwa stopped her, saying that the girl had already participated in a duel. Hayakara Kyuk will go this time. Kani burst into the witch's hut. Her teachers informed her that there was a residence not far from the school, which she should not approach. My sister is crying, outraged that Kazuki lives in such a place. To think that a guy is in the prime of his preoccupation, living with women, and she's not around. The young man explained that Kagwa was sleeping with her because he had nowhere to go. Kani shouts that this is unacceptable and Kazuki must immediately transfer to the fencing division. Kagwa is slowing her down. The president of the student council says that this is decided by the full-time staff of the magic division. Kazuki can't just transfer. Kani gave her a sly look and a smirk. Kani, telling her brother to go to the fencing division now, wanted to take his hand, but no. Kazuki apologizes to his sister, saying that he will stay in the magic division. Kani is very surprised by this decision. The young man does not want all the time spent here to be in vain. This estate became an important place for him, as did the Hayashizaki family. Kani has tears in her eyes because her brother rejects her. She screams that he doesn't listen to his older sister. Kazuki shouts back that her position as an older sister has suddenly become very comfortable. They were distracted by Mio. Amasaki-san asks the president about who she thinks she is. The girl commands her servant as she pleases. Whether Kani is an older or younger sister, Mio won't allow it. The president of the student council of the fencing division asks the newcomer about the problems. She reminds her that rank is not an indicator. The girl asks why the guy needs an already strong fencing division. Kani explained that his presence gives weak students confidence. This also applies to the magic division. If the brother stays, the mages will learn respect for the art of fencing and the fencing division. Kani does not deny Kagwa's words, but reminds him that Kazuki cannot use summoning magic because the magic division does not belong to him. The sister says if Kagwa insists, then they can test his magical abilities in a duel next week during the inter-division competition. The girl apologetically looked into them, asking if the president of the student council of the fencing division was here. Everyone turned to her. Kani wanted to say that the girl was just in time, but she didn't make it. The door clicked, the girl left. The older sister returns back to the mansion with the girl who was looking for her, but when she found her, she ran away. Kani was introduced by a girl. This is her best friend, confidant, student number one. Kamizumi Iori, vice president of the fencing division student council. The president put her hand on the vice president's shoulder and continued talking about the duel next week. She says that if Kazuki can defeat Iori without weapons, only with summoning magic, Kani will recognize her brother as a skilled magician. Kazuki realized that Kamizumi was his sister's student. Accordingly, the girl is trained in the Hashizaki style. Kani reported that she taught her reading intentions, seeing magic, and instant attack. All three disciplines of the Hayashizaki style. If this is a regular duel, the simplest Barrett-type magic attacks can work. The young man watched the girls leave. Kani hurries Ai-chan because Torazu will swear at them again. Otanashikawa wanted to stop Kani, but the girl replied that Iori's victory, like hers, would confirm the superiority of the fencing division at this year's competitions. Kagwa is annoyed to report that the whole situation has turned out quite badly. They have given them a challenge that they cannot ignore. The president argues that Kani is quite simple and impulsive, but her cunning side can be very annoying. 
After school, Hayashizaki Kazuki gave himself a workout to see if Lean was really copying the powers of the other divas. He activated the Barret attack that Asamaki Mio used against him in a duel. Hayashizaki Kazuki told everyone that in fact Lean is not useless, as it seemed to everyone at the very beginning. But Professor Lisa said to keep his friendliness to girls a secret to gain strength. The teacher found this condition ridiculous, but Lim is a strong diva. Some workers do not believe in the existence of Lemageton. Lisa said she shouldn't divulge how powerful she is. She told Kazuki to tell everyone that Lim could copy low-level summoning magic. Kagwa asked why only Phoenix. She wonders why the young man can't use her Asmodeus. The boy refers to the fact that they are simply not compatible. The president is betting that they will succeed if she practices a little. Neo came up to him from behind, who slapped him on the shoulder. She was embarrassed by the words that they were compatible. They have the same magic and the girl is ready to help him. Leem draws the young man's attention to the fact that Mio's level of sympathy is so high that she herself began to get closer to him. The girl, embarrassed, says that she must protect her servant and take care of him. Kazuki better appreciate the kindness of his mistress. The guy tells Mio that summoning magic is more difficult than he expected. The young man believed that her diva was doing all the work or something like that. Amasaki-san lets the guy rest until tomorrow if he has used all his energy, and then continue training. Kazuki gladly agreed, saying that he was free for the coming weekend. Amasaki-san is also free on weekends. Lim tells the guy that this is a great chance to increase her level of sympathy, and suggests asking the girl out on a date. It's time to be a romantic. He asks if she likes food and suggests going out to eat. These words hit Mio's head like a thunderbolt. A huge skull appeared above Amasaki's head, reporting major changes in the girl's heart in the negative direction. Lim called the king an idiot. Mio snorted at his words, asking why on earth she should keep him company. Kazuki reminded her that the girl herself had said that she also had nothing to do on the weekend. The girl asks why this is so. Kazuki turned to the girl after this question. Amasaki Mio asks the young man why he insists so much, believing that he wants to go on a date with her so much. The blush on the guy's cheeks became even brighter. He turned away saying that he wanted to make friends with Mio, as it was then. The girl also blushed even more, realizing that this was really going to be a date. Amasaki Mio, averting his eyes and blushing even more, agrees to play along with the guy if he wants to accompany his mistress so much. While they are in the park where they trained, they are loudly discussing something. Someone is watching them from the roof in the shadows. The mysterious figure was on the roof of the house. No one noticed her. This man is happy that he has finally found Kazuki. Amasaki Mio takes a relaxing shower. She remembers Kazuki's words about friendship and laughs saying that nothing can be done about brotherly love. She's going to play with him all day. Hey Shizaki is standing by the fountain, Mio hasn't come yet. The girl said that she did not want the mentors to follow them, so they decided to meet somewhere else. The girl called out to him. It was Amasaki Mio, apologizing for being late. The boy likes the way the girl looks. Pointing at Kazuki with his finger, Mio shouts that he is too simply dressed, but he is well coordinated. A fashion magazine would be very useful right now. The young man says that the girl has some kind of obsession with making strange associations with food. She reminds him that this is not a date. Kazuki only accompanies her like a princess all day. Neo shouts that it's time to move on. A man's dignity is determined by the shops he chooses. Kazuki directs her in the other direction. Amasaki screams that he is escorting her incorrectly. He doesn't know how to do it properly and Mio demonstrates. First, he must give her his hand. She understands that he is no longer small and if a guy is going to accompany her, he must do it properly. She put his hand on her waist. The Tokyo area where they live was once destroyed by magicians, but then rebuilt as an alchemy city with many different workshops. There are various shops here. Many of these places have only recently been discovered around the world. Tokyo is both a government base and the world's first alchemical metropolis. However, some parts of the city are still in ruins and trouble awaits those who turn into a dark alley. In these places, members of the order and a student of the magic division, or anyone with stigma, become targets of illegal magicians. The so-called stigma hunt. While they're having fun here, maybe Kazuki didn't take the sword for nothing. Neo swears that the young man looks around all the time and does not perform his function properly. Passing by the alley, Kazuki noticed a kitten, and they looked at it. Neo meowed like a cat, but then fell silent. They had dinner at a restaurant. The young man visits restaurants on weekends with pocket money. He wants to improve his cooking. A waiter approached them with a special offer for couples. Neo exclaims that they are not a couple, but the guy offers to become her for the sake of a free special curd cake with cream. Only one fork is offered to the cake, 
and on the cream it says that the girl writes a message with syrup and feeds her boyfriend, saying open your mouth. The waiter asks Amasaki to show her true feelings. Neo drew the word full on the cake. The waitress considered it a kind of manifestation of feelings. Now Mio has to spoon feed him. Kazuki tried it and said it was the princess's turn. Mio screams that she won't do it, but she gave up. The young man spooned a cake and asks Amasaki to open her mouth. They were spending time at the restaurant and it was time to leave. The girl came out happy and grabbed Kazuki's hand herself. The guys lost track of time. It was already quite late. The princess's escort is already ending. Kazuki wanted to tell her something, but the girl asked him to wait a bit. As she ran away, she ordered them not to move a step away. Amasaki hasn't changed at all. He noticed that they had been followed since noon, and this area had stopped being dark because of the sunset. The guy has a bad feeling. The girl jumped on Kazuki's back, saying that she was finally able to talk to the guy alone. He turned around. The girl thought that it was not worth disturbing the couple and asked about their relationship. If they're dating, she'll be upset. It was them. Kazuki remembers her. She is definitely in Nanohan's memories of the house, but the girl he remembers had a different hair color. He has a feeling of unnaturalness. They can't help themselves when they see a dear person in front of them. But if they do, they will run away from her. The girl noticed Mio's return. He asked me to wait a second and gave me my real name. The girl's name is Kaya. Amasaki returned, clutching the bag to herself. Her mirth was interrupted by Kazuki asking about Nanohan's house. Mio hasn't been there since she was adopted. The guy reported that he had just met Kaya, but she had silver hair. Amasaki-san is shocked. She remembers her with black hair. Perhaps the young man imagined it. The girl he met didn't look at all like Kaya. He was distracted from his thoughts by Mio, who handed him a gift. She said he could open it now. Inside was a ruby silver, the last squeak. After all, Kazuki can use Phoenix magic too. The girl reached out to him to fasten the jewelry around the guy's neck. Kazuki looked away. Now he has a similar feather on his chest, like hers. The girl lets him thank her if he wants to, and she asks about the reward, hoping that he will give it to her. They both want to apologize. Kazuki, smiling, asks to be allowed to accompany her in some other way, like today. She blushed and started shaking her head. She agreed. Hearts were all over the girl's head. Mio suddenly clung to his arm. It was her gratitude to the guy who properly accompanied the girl. Mio went ahead of Kazuki, looking at the girl who has matured a lot since that time. He realizes that maybe his feelings for her have also changed a lot since leaving Nanohan's house. He put his hand on her shoulder, calling her by name. The girl expects something more and her face turns even redder. Kazuki picked up the girl and jumped away from the boulder, which landed on the place where they were standing. This is an unusual magic. Hayashizaki Kazuki realized that this was an illegal magician, more specifically, a stigma hunter. Holding Amasaki Mio in her arms, Kazuki looks at the stigma hunter. There was a whole ambush during their date. The guy activates a stone projectile. With his magic, he lifts large stones from the ground. He attacks the guys without using any spells. Kazuki asks Mio to hit back with his magic while he dodges an illegal magician. Amasaki screams that she can't concentrate in this position. His hands are starting to go numb from the weight of the girl. She is outraged that he called her fat. Mio is clearly heavier than his blade. Hayashizaki Kazuki's strength has not yet recovered from the previous training session. He can't even use stamina recovery. A pile of stones flew into them. Kazuki had to throw off the girl. Mio got to her feet, asking him that his blade was really cuter than her. Amasaki stood in front of the young man and said that she would do a great job on her own. A huge boulder is flying at them, which will leave no trace of them. The girl is dictating a spell at this moment. Stretching out her hand in front of her, Mio easily stopped the huge boulder. Amasaki-san has reached the third level of Phoenix magic, Sacrifice. Mio activates the Barret attack. An illegal magician, or, as he can also be called, a stigma hunter, stamped on the ground and a wall of titan appeared in front of him, which stopped all the projectiles launched by the girl. Amasaki-san is determined and is not going to give up. This attitude is insanely liked by a guy who craves stigma. The state is stalemate. His attacks are too fast. At this speed, the Mio cannot activate the cartographic bridges. Besides, her attacks are not effective. We can't delay now. Kazuki wants to buy time, but without a blade and magic, he doesn't know what to do in this situation. Kagwa appeared, who came to the rescue in time. Hayashizaki hadn't expected her to appear. The president is casting a spell. A powerful magician summoned a shadowy ghost that looked exactly like a shark, but 20 times larger than a human. A gloomy ghost attacks its victim, giving no chance of survival. The heart-rending scream of this illegal is heard. Kagwa, coming to the place where this guy was standing, said that he had run away again. 
The president is here because it was a mission. It was an illegal magician named Earth Snake. Hikari tried to deal with him, but he kept running away. Kazuki said that the guy was incredibly fast with spells. Kawa explained that such magicians are under a special contract with their divas, called Obsession, in which they seal the diva inside themselves. They can cast spells with minimal energy expenditure, ignoring activation procedures. But, being already possessed, the diva devours their mental essence with each spell. The Earth Snake will soon lose control too. The president thought that one good blow would be enough to dispel the magic of the illegal, but he slipped away again. Instead of stopping him, Kagwa believes that she should immediately kill him with Guernica. In other words, with the help of Hellfire, Kazuki asked his mentor if she had ever killed. The girl, after a short silence, said that this would be her first. Kagwa changed the subject. She talks about what a beautiful starry night it is today and asked if they were returning home from a date. While the girls were chatting with each other, Kazuki drew attention to Descartes Bridges Kagwa. He's showing too much. Suddenly, the young man gets a fist from Mio. Amasaki asks not to make eyes at the boy with such a look. Kagwa says that he should not stare, because this is a combat outfit for battles. They returned home. Liam finds this strange. The young man should have mastered him at the hundredth level of sympathy, but Kazuki did not have any new spells in his head. When he first tried to summon Barrett, the spell came to him by itself. Kazuki began to think that maybe he had missed something. Lamageddon says that there is a shortcut in extreme cases. Despite the girl's level of sympathy, a magical bond can be temporarily made with a single touch. The guy swears that Leem didn't tell him about it earlier. He's wondering what kind of touch it should be. And the diva explained that through a kiss. When kissing, the magical bond becomes stronger. At this time, he will be able to apply their level of summoning magic. It will be very easy to win the duel. Kazuki can't do that. It's against his principles. Leem does not persuade him, but says that one day the extended connection will gain immunity. This trick will never work twice. It can be left as a last resort. While the guy was thinking about who bought into this logic, someone called his name. It sounded like Kagwa. The president of the student council at Descartes Bridges was standing outside the door. It looks a little strange, but Kazuki let her enter the room. When he turned his back, the girl leaned on him with her whole body. She caught and turned the young man over. Now Kagwa was sitting on top. The young man noticed that the mentor has purple eyes, so this is not a real Kagwa. Kazuki struggles with himself to resist. He understands that it may come to this. There's nothing to be done. Kazuki is forced to use a trick that he saved for Kani. The young man warned and apologized in advance for what he would do. His two palms were rapidly approaching the girl's face. Kagwa came to her senses. She burst into tears and apologized for it. Asmodeus also controls lustful desires, so when she summons him, such a side effect occurs. Sometimes she gets amused. She didn't want to do such things. Kagwa just wants to be his friend, not because he's a guy or anything like that. The president of the student council asks not to think anything bad about her. A girl doesn't think about something that crosses personal boundaries. Kazuki calms her down. The girl helped him with school, was friendly to him, despite the fact that he is a swordsman. Kagwa believed that the young man was able to combine the magic and fencing divisions. Kagwa was always very kind to him. The young man did not dream of more, so he asks the girl not to worry about this and not to consider him so low as to neglect the good intentions of the mentor. The president hugged Kazuki, telling him that she was really worried about him. The girl walked forward and thought that he would overcome this gap. Kagwa expected too much from him and even tried to open up to him. Kagwa admits that it was selfish of her. Kazuki calms down by saying that he meant that the president was the first to recognize him. Their sincere and frank conversation increases the level of Kagwa's sympathy. It has reached 65%. An illegal magician turns to Akira ordering her to stop hunting those two people, Mia and Kazuki. Coming out of the darkness, the girl says that they are hunting for stigmas to bring them back to where she was. She asks not to forget about their purpose. These people are very important to the girl, so she wants to be the one who kills them. Akira didn't expect to say that. She doesn't understand what's going on. Her head seemed to split into two parts. She asks the illegal magician what he did to her. The girl screams and asks for her sanity to be restored. Hey Shizaki Kazuki shouts that it's time to move out. Sunday has come, which means the upcoming duel will determine his fate. An outdoor stadium. There were a lot of people in the stands. Everyone is very happy about this event. Lisa Westwood orders the girl to maintain a barrier around the arena. The president of the student council informs that they have organized an open competition. So now ordinary citizens will be able to see the magic of the call. Kagwa talks about inviting crowds of people to show off magic. 
she is wary of the fact that stigma hunters can sneak into the stadium and calls it carelessness. Kani laughs at her, saying that she worries too much about it. Kayashizaki Kazuki thinks that his level of sympathy is quite high, but he still can't use any magic other than Barrett. He was distracted from his thoughts by the president of the student council of the magic division, asking if the young man was okay. The girl sadly reminds the boy that, in case of loss, he will leave the magic division. Kazuki calms her down, saying that he can handle even Barrett alone and asks her to stop blaming herself. Instead of this sadness, he would prefer his mentor to smile cheerfully at him. Kagwa shouts that she will smile at him with all her might. They were distracted from the conversation by Yamada Torazu, who wants to talk to Hayashizaki Kazuki. The guy is a freshman from the fencing division. In the competition, he is up against the vice president of the magic division. The kid asks that Kazuki fought the magic stigma with just one blade and was able to win. Tarazu said Kazuki is cool. He thought all the time that they would never defeat the magicians, but then the young man won. After that, the guy thought that if he tried a little harder, he would be able to win. Kazuki wanted to tell him something. Then Yamada Tarazu said that he would give his all in this duel, as Kazuki did. The guy wants the young man to wish him luck. They shook hands and said that they would both give their best. Suddenly, Mio came looking for Kazuki. It wasn't the best moment. Amasaki-san caught two guys looking at each other maliciously, sparkling and smiling, giggling at the same time. In the competition between the divisions, Hayakari Kyuki acts as a columnist and judge. She welcomes all the guests and participants who came to this event. The girl informs that they are starting the academy match. On the part of the magic division, Vice President Hashikazi Hikari, representing the magicians, will perform in the first battle. The girl is already in her combat outfit, Discards Bridges Bala. Hayashizaki Kazuki sees Discards Bridges for the first time at Hikari's. He understands that this is the desecrated god of the harvest, Bal Zebul. Kagwa says he is better known as Beelzebub, Lord of the Flies. The opponent of the magic division is Yamada Torazu who represents the fencing division. While Hikari feels confident without worrying about the outcome of the fight, Torazu begins to get very nervous. Hyuk, without further ado, announces the start of the first match of their competition. As soon as the start was announced, Torazu rushed forward, simultaneously reading the actions of Hashikazi Hikari, who had already finished her call. She used a powerful attack that contained electric lightning. Anticipating this, Torazu easily dodged the attack. The fencing division representative approached Hashikazi Hikari and swung his sword to deliver a crushing blow to the swordsman. Torazu did not succeed, as Hikari could have foreseen this and managed to use protective magic. The guy doesn't give up and wants to strike again. He failed, as the representative of the magic division began to dictate a spell, causing a thunderstorm. Thoraz has nothing to fear if he shortens the distance. The guy wants to find a gap and get closer to the opponent. He jumped to the side and there was no one in the place where Hikari was standing. The girl was already behind Torres to apply the electric chair. Hashikazi hit him. The guy flew whistling far back. As soon as the dust cleared, Torazu wanted to defend himself, but a binding spell was used on him. The vice president of the magic division casts a spell mentioning the thunderous roar of the sacred flame. An electric weapon appears in her hands. She has materialized a hammer and is about to use a crushing attack by Yagurumi. Hikari shouts that Torazu tried to evade the attack this time. If he, being tied up, can do it. A microphone flew into the back of Hashikazi Hikari's head, which hit a certain point. The vice president fell to the ground, and a simple microphone was thrown at her by Hayakari Kyuk, who is leading this match. She reminded the vice president that if you use level 8 summoning magic on a person, they will die. Hikari, who is a little dizzy, apologized because she got a little carried away. In any case, the winner is the first member of the student council of the magic division Hashizaki Hikari. Turazu, sitting on the ground, let out a sigh of relief. At first it seemed to him that he could win, but it turned out to be impossible. Kani approached him, who said that Turazu was good for his level. The president of the student council of the fencing division did not expect success on the first attempt. She said to leave the rest to her and Iori. The young man noticed that the president was already in combat uniform. She is serious about winning. Tarazu asked about Kazumi, and the girl informed him that the vice president had already left for the field. While Kani wants Ayori to show the fruits of her training, Hayashizaki Kazumi leaves Kagwa and Mio. Kayuk announces that the vice president of the fencing division Kazumi Ayori, who is the eldest daughter of her family, is competing in the next match. Her opponent will be Hayashizaki Kazuki from the student council of the magic division. They are both glad to meet. 
Hayakari Kyuk announced the start of the match. Kazumi Iori rushed forward, launching an attack. The boy uses Barret. The girl easily dodged the numerous projectiles that the young man used. She reduced the distance between them to a minimum. The vice president attacks time after time, but Hayashizaki Kazuki dodges every swing of the sword. Using the moment, he pushes off from her weapon and flies up. From a bird's eye view, the boy reactivates Barret. This attack is too simple because Kazumi dodges it. There is a buzz and a whisper in the stands. The people couldn't see them. An amazing fight that can last a long time. Iori realizes that the opponent was able to dodge all of her melee attacks. If this was a normal sword fight, she wouldn't have a chance. Hayashizaki Kazuki understands that the girl has the advantage, but so far they have hand-to-hand -hand combat. If the battle drags on, the guy will run out of magic power. The president of the student council of the magic division shouts from the stands. Kagwa shouts at him to have Kazuki use her summoning magic, citing excellent compatibility. Amasaki also tries to support him, but her voice is too quiet. The guy laughs, saying that they will soon intervene in the battle themselves. Hayashizaki Kazuki noticed that the level of sympathy had increased. He feels that he is not enough yet, but if the girls believe in it with all their hearts, then he should believe it too. The guy also wants to increase their level of sympathy. Suddenly, the young man established a new magical connection. A smodius spell penetrates his mind. With the current level of sympathy, the young man can use the strongest level of magic. Kazumi Iori attacks him again. Her attacks are nothing to the guy because he dodges. Stopping, Kazuki began to cast a new summoning spell. Black tentacles have appeared from the ground, which attack the girl multiple times. She is wary of the fact that the opponent suddenly used the new magic. Hayashizaki realized that the sympathy meter works both ways. Even if the level is high, it won't work if the young man doesn't believe it either. The guy will keep the love that everyone gives him in his chest and believe in it. Kazuki dictates a new spell. Kagwa noticed that the young man's magical power was growing exponentially. Kani shouts at Iori to interrupt the spell. These strong bonds are the boy's strength. Amasaki Mio noticed that the guy was already level 5. That's how the swordsman and it uses the magic of the wings of the phoenix. Hayashizaki finished reciting the spell. He used the blazing wings attack. The vice president of the fencing division was struck by bright fire. Due to such a powerful attack, Kazumi Iori flew far back. The crowd in the stands is shocked. Many people opened their mouths in surprise. Hayakari Kyuk stopped the fight and declared Hayashizaki Kazuki from the student council of the magic division the winner of the battle. The young man understands that he won with the help of everyone's support. He suddenly remembered that he couldn't control the power of the last attack. Kazuki ran to Kazumi Iori to see if the girl was okay. The girl says that she was almost fried to a golden brown. The young man apologizes for this misunderstanding. Hayashizaki Kazuki extended his hand to help her up. The girl thanked him, holding out her hand in return. The vice president of the fencing division wanted to say something to him, but she was interrupted by Kyuk, calling the guy just jewelry precision. The last attack burned the opponent's clothes. Iori ran away. Amasaki Mio and Otanashi Kagwa approached the boy to remind him that the young man won thanks to hard work. Hayashizaki Kazuki turned to his older sister. He announced that he was staying in the magic division. Kani, looking away, says that after demonstrating the level of his summoning magic, she has nothing to object to him. The boy thanks her. The student council of the magic division became a very important place for him. He felt a sense of satisfaction and peace. Akira appeared behind him, having lost her mind. She asks how Kazuki could trade her for this important place. The girl says it's cruel. Hayashizaki turned to the source of the voice. He recognized her. Akira keeps talking. She tried and endured the whole match so that he would say that he wanted to return to this place. She wonders why that is. Why is Hayashizaki Kazuki using magic with all these people? It's terrible for her. Therefore, the girl will no longer hold back. The important place is where the guy traded Akira, the girl promises to destroy. A monster appears out of the darkness. Hayashizaki Kazuki looks at Kaya dumbfounded. He wanted to ask her something, but the girl was in the air and was doing a dragon summoning. The huge dragon Nyaheg Fafnir appeared, who was ordered to destroy all the annoying bugs around Hayashizaki Kazuki. Lisa Westwood made the fog the magic of telekinesis. It will buy them some time. She orders the audience to evacuate and ordered the magicians and swordsmen to counterattack with the double strength of both divisions. The president of the student council of the fencing division does not understand why magic is needed if it is just a dragon. The elder sister threw a blade into her brother's hands and said that one short blade would be enough to win. Kenny sped away. Kagwa said there was nothing she could do about it. All the stigmas have turned into combat outfits. They will deal with the green dragon. 
Amasaki Mio wanted to fight the dragon and called the young man. But he stopped her, saying that their opponent was Kaya. There is a fierce struggle going on in the arena. Hayashizaki Kazuki asks Kai why she got involved with forbidden magic. The girl says that since Kazuki and Mio left the academy, she has been very lonely and sad. According to her, only this diva comforted her and gave her the strength to be with him again. The girl says she is happy. She was able to reunite with Hayashizaki Kazuki. Then, like a record, she repeated that she was happy. Akira is so happy that she wants to kill. An illegal magician has formed a sword with sharp teeth that look more like a crocodile's mouth. Kazuki sees that it is a blue one and a half sword. He understands that it cannot be that she is trained in fencing. While the guy was thinking about it, Akira strikes. He was able to dodge this attack. Heishikazi Kazuki doesn't understand what's going on. He sees that her breathing and muscles do not betray her intentions in any way. It's as if the blade has a will of its own. Akira strikes again, but the young man pulls out a blade. The girl shows the guy her strength. Kazuki and Mio left her behind. The boy feels that she is strong. He wonders which diva Kaya has signed a contract with. Amasaki Mio shouts at him that there is no difference in what his opponent is a sword. The girl asks why he is hesitating. Mio uses Barret. Akira easily stopped all the projectiles. She told Mio that this blade was a sacred treasure that would deflect all her shots. The opponent activated Muspelheim, the world of fire in Norse mythology. Akira wants to kill everyone at once. The ringing voice of a mermaid, show your chilling feelings. Sadness will become snowflakes, and loneliness will turn into a gentle snowfall. May the world surround you with cool nothingness. The White Album Hayakara Kyuk has completely neutralized the magic of the illegal magician. Akira asks who this girl is. Although Kyuk is a freshman, she already uses magic of this level. The girl said that she lives for the sake of competition. Hayashizaki Kazuki realizes that he is not ready for this and tells his girlfriends that he will become Kai's opponent. The guy asks you to cover for him. Akira sadly realizes that the guy will meet her with a blade. Kazuki realizes that since he has a blade in his hand, there is only one thing left for him. The rival attacks the boy with the words that it is very cruel. Kazuki is determined. With his sword, he will break her magic and make the girl helpless. Hayashizaki Kani is fighting a powerful dragon. She moves through his body, getting closer to his eye. The president of the student council of the fencing division plunges his blade into the eye of a mighty beast that is ready to destroy everything around. Kani pulled out her blade and was already running away from the dragon. She stood up, saying that everything was very boring. Tarazu shouts at her to be careful. She dodged the dragon's attack. He's not dead yet, as expected from a dragon whose name has become a legend. A living creature. One blow was not enough. My strength is running out. Kagwa and Hikari join the fight. The president of the student council of the magic division uses the fruitless flower of hatred. This magic should constrain his movements for a while. The girl tells the vice president to use lightning conquest again. Hikari says she has used this magic four times already today. The president asks her not to be such a sissy. Asmodeus attacking magic is very strong. The girl needs to concentrate. Kagwa must buy more time for the divine light. While the girl was trying to say her spell, fully concentrating, the dragon wanted to deliver a crushing blow to her. Kagwa survived. She was saved by the president of the Kani fencing division. Kagwa did not expect the girl to come to her rescue. She asked Kani why she had saved her. The president of the fencing division explained that this black dragon might be a small fry, but her sword alone would not kill him. Kani offers to help each other temporarily. She plans to stop this creature, and Kagwa must use singing magic to finish it off. Every stigma has the magic of singing and is a materializing spell of the 10th level of summoning. But first of all it requires great concentration so as not to destroy everything around. The president of the fencing division believes that Kagwa cannot trust her and her plan. The girl says that this is not the case. She's wanted this for a long time. There are not enough people in the fight with the dragon. Kagwa asks the vice president to call Hayakara Kyuk. Together, the two presidents are invincible. Akira strikes with his sword blow after blow. The young man concluded that the girl was waving a long sword at the expense of her magic. Kaya stopped and said that she only wanted the strength to regain her precious memories, and yet she wonders why the guy has become such that she wants to kill him. Hayashizaki Kazuki screams for her to do something about it. Akira can't resist and asks to do something with her. Kani realizes that they made it just in time. Magicians dictate a powerful spell. Akira is very scared. I know your name. Your strength is an omnipotent desire. Oh, the pitch black contract. I command you to show all the power you have. Her name is Asmodeus. She's like Kagwa. Kagwa is what he is. Let it become her thoughts. Asmodeus is materializing in the world. 
Damn it, Malice, the girl asks her to drag her enemies through the open gates to hell. A huge gate appeared behind Asmodeus, pulling in the air. Her desire is the command of hell. Let Asmodeus show them hopelessness. The dragon and Akira are enveloped in black smoke. Asmodeus smiles and says it's very good. Kogwa's desire is also her desire. The seventh circle of hell is the incredible power of Asmodeus. Hayashizaki Kazuki sees the materialization of a large-scale instant death spell that does not distinguish between enemies and allies. The power of the school's strongest magician, Adanashi Kagwa. The young man hears Akira's scream. She's in a lot of pain because of the spell. The boy only now realized that the purpose of the spell was Kaya. He asks Kagwa to stop, because this call will kill everyone, including the girl. The president of the magic division won't stop this. A lot of comrades suffered because of this fire magic. Besides, if the child runs away, there will be trouble. Akira, who is consumed by darkness, screams that she does not want to die. He doesn't want to die all alone like that. Kagwa can't miss her like a stone snake. She should not doubt, because the girl is the strongest magician of this school. Hayashizaki Kazuki understands that the president is right, but he doesn't think it's right. He asks himself about the possible regret if he kills Kaya. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the strength to resist her. The president of the magic division screams that this can't be happening. It's impossible. Asmodeus Flame didn't do anything. Leem tells the young man to be careful. When a diva controls a person, his mind is distorted. His very personality loses its outlines and the body passes into the hands of a summoned being. In other words, Akira has already been captured. A guy appeared instead of Kai. It's probably a diva named Loki who has captured the mind of a girl hungry for power. He laughs. He is glad that he has a body in this world. The Order of Knights tried to stop him, but he was the first to achieve his grandiose goal. The guy who appeared from the girl's body introduced himself. His name is Loki and he promises to bring Ragnarok. It's his duty. The end of human history will come soon and the era of the gods will come once again. Hayashizaki Kazuki realized that the diva with whom Kaya had signed a contract was Loki from Norse mythology. The guy turns to the young man. He knows that there is Lemigen and Kazuka. 72 pillars of Solomon are helping people this time, and the boy is their new king. This does not bother the young man. He asks this insolent man about what he did to Kaya. Loki replies that that's exactly what the guy thought. Absorbed it and destroyed it. The diva thanked me for the food. Thanks to her rage, Loki was able to instantly break the girl and transform her into I want to beat everyone I don't love. He was breaking her will step by step. She sobbed, surrendering herself to his power. While he is laughing and shouting that it was so interesting that he is directly drawn to the Nobel Prize for cruelty, Hayashizaki Kazuki went on the attack. Loki laughs, realizing that the young man is challenging the legend. The boy strikes him blow after blow. Kazuki doesn't understand where such power comes from. In a thousand strikes, he couldn't break through his defenses. The diva screams so that the guy does not get arrogant. He can also use magic and screams for the young man to see the true essence of his sword. Loki used Levitine. Hayashizaki Kazuki sees this attack and realizes that he cannot dodge it. If he accepts it, then there will be no energy left after that. Neo appeared in front of Kazuki, who took the brunt of the attack. She fell helplessly into the boy's arms. Amasaki answers the question of why she did it. If Hayashizaki had taken on such an amount of magic power, he would definitely have died. Life is fading in her eyes. Mio says it's a rank's duty to protect the E-ranks. The boy is furious that this has happened. Loki realized that he had killed someone else. He asked that this girl named Mio was the lover of a young man. Kazuki was silent. The diva laughs, saying that the guy has a great facial expression. He tells Kazuki to mourn this moment for the rest of his life, so that he always remembers the day they met. Hayashizaki Kazuki tells Loki to shut up. The guy wants to kill the diva. He rushed towards his enemy. Loki says that with his magical energy, this is impossible. The boy's katana won't pierce his magic. While Hayashizaki Kazuki rushes towards the enemy, he counts a fire spell. Loki noticed this and laughs at the fact that the guy doesn't care about life at all. The boy pulls out his blade and stabs this ruthless brute. Loki realized that the young man had forced the flame to concentrate on the blade of the sword. First, the longsword breaks through his defensive magic. Before it drags on, two more quick punches take down the defense. This is the perfect martial arts style that his father followed. The highest level of Hayashizaki Ryuui and to magic seal. This human sword. Loki let his defenses fall. He thinks it's stupid, but he's only going to get his own body at his disposal. The president of the magic division shouts that he will not let him escape and activates the relief. The wounded Loki is surrounded by large machines rumbling the ground. The girl did not succeed. 
an earth snake came to Loki's aid. Diva realized that the Midgard serpent had also come to the real world. A huge creature stands in defense of the Scandinavian god. Loki turned to Hayashizaki Kazuki and says he will remember this day. He recognizes the young man as King Solomon. Both creatures disappeared into thin air. The world is coming to an end. The young man dropped his blade and realized that he had lost this battle. This world has already been taken over by mythical creatures. Amasaki said Kazuki did a good job. He chased Loki away. Holding the girl in his arms, the young man asks why she protected him. Amasaki Mio said she was really happy to meet him. She tells all the moments when she really felt happy with him. The young man knows. Now he understood. One has only to look at her expression, as everything becomes obvious. He doesn't need Liam's magic to understand her true feelings. Amasaki Mio apologizes for always doing and not saying what she really wants, but these are her real feelings. Giggling, she says she's glad she fell in love with Hayashizaki Kazuki. She wanted to kiss him on the lips. The girl stopped showing any signs of life. That magical blow struck her down and robbed her of that very jewel, her life. Without saying much, Mio left this world. He couldn't protect her. He didn't have the strength to protect the girl who loved her. If only she hadn't trusted a coward like him. Amasaki Mio is lying on the ground. Hayashizaki Kazuki began to sob. It was very painful for him to lose his girlfriend. He noticed the feather that Mio was wearing. A pendant in the form of a feather matching it. The new trend in fashion, called the silver apple, is the same as his. She could also use phoenix magic. Kazuki remembered Liam's words that he could use any summoning magic. He asked about the completed summoning. Lemageddon said she could, but explained that, with his current level of magical power, it would be dangerous. If he falls into a state of magical intoxication, he may not come back. The young man said that such little things do not scare him. He gently lifts the girl to the ground and makes a kiss with her, creating a strong magical bond. The young man casts a spell, the symbol of destruction and resurrection. Overcoming the laws of this world is the heavenly phoenix bird. If this is a completed call, if he succeeds in changing his fate, then a miracle will definitely happen. The phoenix tells the young man that the current one does not have enough magical power. If he forces himself to summon magic, his mind will be thrown into the astral, and his eye will be lost forever. Hayashizaki Kazuki laughs, saying that his eye does not care. For him, these are small things. He doesn't care what happens to him. The phoenix turned to King Solomon and told him to sing his poem on. The boy shouts a spell, listen to his thousands of words and rewrite the illusion of this world. Revival. The young man sees the darkness and thinks he is dead. Countless memories have shattered into fragments and are now spinning around in this pitch black world. His date with Mio, Kogwa's kindness, Kenny, training, and everything from Nanohan's house, and his past life, a frosty winter day. His mother, who left him on the threshold of the institute. That's why he couldn't believe it. If his own mother couldn't love him, then no one else would either. Asmodeus laughs at him, calling the boy a weakling. She says that even if Kogwa is exhausted, her heart continues to beat for her. It couldn't be that his thoughts were real. He had once believed in her bond with him. A phoenix appears behind Kogwa. He says they do it for themselves, but it is for the sake of others that they make contracts with people and choose a king. In the boy's current state, he should be able to feel their connection. The young man hears his name. Asmodia is trying to convey a thought to him. She tells him to come back faster and not keep the woman waiting. To stand up to God, people need a king. Hayashizaki Kazuki opened his eyes. He is in his room at the witch's hut. He wonders how much sleep he's had. The boy suddenly remembered about Mio. He shouts at her and searches the rooms. Kazuki hopes she's okay. Running into the kitchen, Hayashizaki Kazuki sees that Mio is alive. She turned around and was glad that the young man had woken up. She points at him, dumbfounded. Pushing him back into the room, he shouts that he can't get up and orders the guy to just rest in his room. Kazuki is a little shocked by this, but went back to his bed. The girl came into the room. The boy concluded that Mio seemed to know that he would wake up around this time. Amasaki made him rice porridge. Kazuki realized that the voice calling him belonged to Mio. He, looking at her, asks why the girl dressed like a maid. The girl remembers that he likes it and thought that the young man would be happy to see her like this when he wakes up. Amasaki Mio scooped up porridge with a spoon and approached the boy, holding the food to her mouth. She tells him to be faster, she's the maid today. The girl tells the young man to enjoy with all his heart and finally eat the porridge that she cooked. Hayashizaki Kazuki slept for five days. Just to make sure, he asks the girl if anything radical has happened in the world during this time. During these few days, Loki gathered and led the illegal magicians. Also on behalf of the Ainakriyas, Loki declared war on the Japanese government and all the orders of the knights of the country. 
he began to carry out sabotage attacks. The Order of Knights has not yet made public the actions against Loki. The rest of the magicians are waiting for the diva's change. Amasaki Mio said that because of this, the Academy received too many assignments, so everyone is currently absent. Since she and Kyuk are freshmen, they were not allowed to join. The boy listened attentively to what the girl was saying. Even now, Kai's pitiful cry is in his ears, as are Loki's taunts. He realizes that he cannot fight against Loki. Mio reminded the guy that he has an E-rank and would never be allowed on such a dangerous mission. These words pierce the young man's head like an arrow. Hayashizaki Kazuki laughs, saying that he has already forgotten about his E-rank. Mio adds that everything will be fine if he teams up with a rank, that is, with her. Now they are no longer mistress and servant, but partners fighting shoulder to shoulder. Defeating villains, they will travel the world in search of adventures and hidden treasures, as well as complete tasks, and those related to Loki. The girl thought that the young man did not like it, because he had a dissatisfied look. The guy said it was an honor for him. He was speechless. Amasaki Mio put her hands on his and says she always wanted to be with Hayashizaki Kazuki. The desire to protect her is growing stronger in him. The girl is getting closer and closer to the guy. Their noses almost touched each other, and their lips remained a couple of millimeters apart. Kagwa and Hikara burst into the room. The president of the magic division shouts that she heard Kazuki's voice. Such a sudden appearance scared the kids very much. They looked like tomatoes and were covered in sweat from stress. The president of the magic division jumped on Hayashizaki Kazuki. She's crying because she was so worried. The girl is happy that he has finally woken up. Hashikazi Hikara also snuggled up to him. She apologizes and says that he probably doesn't like girls like her. Hayakara Kyuk also came into the room, who joined the mentors to hug the guy. They're all crying. Amasaki is shocked by this. She screams at the mentors that they are doing what they shouldn't. Kagwa apologized and explained that all three were under the influence of a Smodius spell. They want to snuggle up to someone so much that they can't restrain themselves. So they ask Amasaki Mio to lend them Hayashizaki Kazuki for a while. The guy, in the arms of the girls, is just silent and enjoying himself. Mio's cry for the girls to let go of her Kazuki could be heard throughout the witch hut. Hayashizaki kept his foreboding a secret. He doesn't know what's going to happen next. The guy must protect everything dear to him and become king. A few days later, the pilot reports on the radio that there are six miles left to the airport. He asks to prepare the landing. The plane landed on the landing gear. After driving some distance, the air transport stopped. A girl came out of it, who flew to Japan. Amasaki Mio grabbed the tentacles, which are covered with a strange slime. The girl screams, resisting with all her might. A few minutes earlier, a young man and a girl used their magic, a wall of fire and a barret. The slime runs away from their attacks. Kazuki's sword is useless, which cannot be said about fire magic. After the incident with Loki, he led a group of illegal magicians called Einherjar Loki. Constant attacks began. The Order of Knights has enough work everywhere, and students take it on as quests. This time they took up the quest the destruction of evil creatures. This land is full of creatures that came from Astram, which is overflowing with magic. And in order to prevent them from spreading, they must destroy them quickly. Amasaki Mio called Kazuki. She happily snuggled up to the guy, saying that they did it using the right magic. Hayashizaki asks not to lose concentration in the middle of the task. The girl reassured him, saying that she had checked everything. The young man noticed something and stopped his partner. The guy looks at the remaining scarlet slime on the ground. He noticed that she had a strong defense against fire magic. While Hayashizaki Kazuki is thinking about what they need to do, Amasaki Mio's attention has shifted to something else. The young man hears a piercing scream behind him and discovers the girl trapped. She asks not to look and not to approach. Kazuki shouts that now is not the time to say something like that. Hayashizaki cut off all the tentacles that enveloped Amasaki Mio and rushed away from them with the girl in his arms. Let the cutting off of the tentacles work for now. But what to do with the scarlet slime if Barret does not work? The young man does not know. The magic of summoning the ice element worked on the slime. Hayakara Kaiyuk did it. The scarlet slime, thanks to her magic, instantly froze. She condemns the impossibly shameless look. As far as we can understand, the guys accidentally took the same task. Kyuk asks not to fight if they can't and just go home. In this state, they were unable to continue the task, and the young man was worried about it. Kazuki thanked them for their help and said that they would return to the academy now. Hayashizaki almost left, but he remembered something. The guy shouted to Kyuka to be careful. The slime may be immune to ice-type attacks. While the young man was thinking about whether the girl heard him or not, Amasaki Mio, who was in the guy's arms, called him. 
He turned around to find out her condition, but the girl tearfully says that her body is hot. Everything itches because of the mucus on the skin. Amasaki Mio started talking about how much she loves Hayashizaki Kazuki. She wants to get closer to him. The guy realized that the mucus had affected her brain. He understands that things are bad, but, like the swordsman Hayashizaki, the young man tells himself that he will not be tempted by such a temptation. As a result, their first assignment completely failed. After all, a two-person team must not be enough. Kazuki thought about inviting someone else to join the team. Amasaki Mio refuses the idea of a young man. She doesn't want some strange person joining them. Hayashizaki Kazuki says that due to such a small number of people in the team, the number of possible tactics is very limited. Amasaki stood up and began to say loudly that she would try harder and become even stronger. She is categorically against anyone else joining their team. If Kazuki could use more spells, the problem would be solved, but he is not capable of it yet. The next day, Lisa Westwood reports that Amasaki Mio will be demoted to B-rank. She lost the duel to E-rank and failed the task the very next day. If this continues, she will be demoted and kicked out of the witch hut. Hayashizaki wants to object because they were based only on the results. That's why Lisa tells this news to the guy, and not to Mio herself. The teacher knows that there are only two of them in the team. If a young man considers such an assessment unfair, then he should invite one of his friends to join them. It would be best if Kazuki could persuade Mio to accept someone like Hayakari Kaiyuk. He would also be able to get along better with her, but Mio's feelings are also important to the young man. Hayashizaki Kazuki was so lost in thought that they ran into Hayakari Kyuk in one of the rooms. He was surprised that the girl was here and asked if she was okay. Hayashizaki spoke about the failure of the assignment and the subsequent assessment. This is a coming problem. The boy laughs and says that he is just an E-rank. Kyuk's face changed from calmness to frown and severity. She says it's not fair. They shouldn't have given an assessment just because the task failed once. Kazuki asked the girl about her concern for him. Kyuk explained that it wasn't out of concern for him. She said thank you for that day. Thanks to the boy, the girl successfully completed the task. Hayashizaki Kazuki realized that this was about the phrase about the features of slugs. Without his advice, Kyuk would have used ice magic on the slugs and lost her temper. I might have fallen into a trap. They finished talking about the assignment and the young man decided to invite Hayakari to join their team. The girl thinks that he is asking for help because they failed the task and found themselves in a difficult situation. Kazuki admits to being weak. Kayuyuk says that the only weak member of the team is Amasaki Mio. At that moment, Mio came around the corner of the building. She heard the words that she might be demoted to B-rank. The guys did not see the appearance of a girl on the horizon. Amasaki Mio interrupted them, asking if she could really be promoted to B-rank. Kazuki didn't expect to see her. Hayakari Kyuk explained why in complete composure. The girl lost the duel to E-rank and appeared in such an inappropriate way after the task. This is quite enough to make a decision. He also adds that in this case, Mio will not be able to stay in the witch hut. Amasaki does not believe these words, she refuses to accept them. The young man tries to stop Kyuk, but to no avail. The girl says that if Mio doesn't have any special features and she loses to a lower rank, it's only her fault. She is disgusted to see someone who does not have the appropriate talent. Hayakara Kyuk adds that she would personally give such a person the opportunity to say the last words. The girl challenges Amasaki Mio to a duel. If she loses, she will be demoted to B-rank. While Amasaki Mio and Hayakara Kyuk are donning their discards bridges, they are being watched by the president of the Magic Division and Lisa Westwood. There is an epic battle going on between the girls, two different elements against each other. Kazuki believes that Kagwa is thinking that it would be better to see which of them is stronger. The president says that everything is not quite right and suggests looking at the outcome. Both Amasaki Mio and Hayakara Kyuk use different spells. And so, it would seem, Kyuk struck a powerful blow, but no. Neo has a flaming armor that her opponent couldn't penetrate. The girl began to speak the spell of the fire wall. All the lights disappeared because Hayakara cast a white album spell, which was able to completely extinguish the magic. Kaiyuk took advantage of Amasaki Mio's confusion and moved behind her. She struck when the girl turned to face her. Hayashizaki Kazuki shouts Mio's name. Kagwa scoffs, saying that the guy loses his cool when it comes to Amasaki. The president says she could be a little jealous. Amasaki is not giving up and is still on his feet. The president of the magic division says that Mio is important to the young man. 
but he underestimates her. Kyuk has more mana by nature. When Mio uses flaming wings and Kyuk uses an ice bomb, fire and ice collide with each other. Kazuki understands that the ice bomb is a 6th level skill. Fighting head on, Amasaki Mio would lose. When the two elements collided, Mio began to dictate the spell again. Hayakara Kyuk noticed this and became wary. Kagwa says that, being on the verge of defeat, a girl can get a huge amount of magic and abnormal willpower. This is another one of Mio's talents for fighting Kaiyuk. Amasaki used the fifth level of magic twice in a row. After a fight of such a high level, there is no chance of relegation. Both girls are exhausted. They spent a lot of energy on the duel. Lisa Westwood does not admit that Hayakari succumbed. Kaiyuk said she couldn't, having Amasaki as an opponent. Lisa declared a draw. The score of the one below the rank increases. Hayakari Kyuk is number one in his class. The professor informs Amasaki Mio that the girl will be considered in a rank for a while. Mio approached Kazuki and they were both happy about it. Lisa Westwood was crucified at that moment. She shouts at Amasaki that she doesn't listen to a damn thing. Hayashizaki Kazuki noticed something out of the corner of his eye. Turning in that direction, the young man found no one and thought that he had imagined it. There was a girl standing around the corner, watching him. Hayashizaki Kazuki came to Hayakari Kyuka to talk. He enters a room that looks more like a library. The girl sitting on the floor says she just spends a lot of time reading books. She was wearing only a shirt. The young man turned away. The girl did not understand this action. He explains that he can't figure out where to look while she's dressed like that. Kyuk does not want to change clothes for him and believes that her body is not worth looking at. The guy reminds her that he constantly tells her about her beauty. In that case, he will continue to look at whatever he wants. Hikari Kyuk changed her body position and covered herself up a bit. She asked why Hayashizaki Kazuki had come. The young man asked about the duel. He asked the girl if she had known from the very beginning how the battle would end. Kyuk said that this was not the case. She became annoyed that he and Mio were getting closer in the mansion. She wanted to read her last spells and that was it. Hayashizaki knew that she was a kind and cool girl. Hayakari was taken aback and asked to listen carefully to what she was talking about. The guy invites the girl back to the team, but she doesn't want to. Kyuk prefers a strictly professional relationship. She doesn't want to bring any personal feelings to the battlefield. Hayashizaki Kazuki interrupted her by saying that he wanted to unite with her and become closer. These words confused the girl very much. Kayok turned away and cursed at the guy, saying that she refused to join his team. The young man noticed the heart icon. After that, Hayakara asked to leave her room. Leem said that he was not putting enough effort into strengthening the harem. The guy doesn't want to chase girls just for the sake of strengthening the team. Hayashizaki Kazuki wants to get closer to Hayakari Kayoyuka in a friendly relationship not romantic, and the like. Amasaki Mio called out to the guy. It's quite late now, the young man was very surprised. Mio has a small request. They are lying on the bed together. Kazuki thinks that the girl wants to test his willpower. Mio says she doesn't want to sleep alone tonight. Leem swears at the king and tells him not to spoil the mood and disposition. This will reduce the number of skills. Hayashizaki offers her to move a little, but the girl flatly refuses, saying that everything is fine. She reminded the young man that in childhood they often dozed together. The boy fell asleep, but Mio couldn't sleep. She woke up the young man and told him that after she was accepted into the Amasaki family, Mio lived without relying on anyone's kindness. The girl couldn't show her weakness. What was recognized was her talent and nothing more. It's bad to say this myself, but the girl really worked hard, as if her life depended on it. Gradually, Enigma grew and moved to the next stage. Mio tried not to lose to anyone and finally reached the rank. In fact, it was difficult for her to duel too. After the girl heard that she would be demoted to B-rank, she was scared and wanted Hayashizaki Kazuki to be there. The young man puts his hand on her hair, reminding her that the girl was able to show them all her strength. Even Lisa Westwood was surprised. Amasaki Mio sat down next to Kazuki. From now on, if the young man thinks they need a new team member, then she agrees. The girl will hate him if the man turns out to be a pervert, but she won't complain anymore. Mio feels as if she has been putting something else in the first place of the battle all this time. But in exchange, from time to time, the girl asks for the young man's outstretched hand. Amasaki wants to feel that they will be from now on and forever. But even so, they're talking about a valuable partner. Hayashizaki Kazuki can't just pick someone. The young man should think about the team more carefully. The guys went to bed. The next morning, Hashikazi Hikara and Hayashizaki Kazuki train next to the witch hut. 
The vice president advises the guy not to fight by force against force. Instead, it is better to continue to divert the enemy's attacks. It works against opponents fighting like monsters who use only brute force. Kazuki reminds Hikara that the girl has the control of light, which should not be forgotten in close combat. Harnessing light sends special electrical signals to the nervous system and muscles, allowing you to incredibly increase speed and improve reflexes. At first, by following the young man's movements and using the technique, Hikaru was able to imitate the style. Hoshikazi grasps everything on the fly. Hayashizaki Kazuki considers her a terrifyingly good student. Hikara, in turn, realizes that it was a good idea to ask the young man for a workout. Every time she crosses swords with a young man, it seems to the girl that a whole world opens up before her. She was always waiting for someone like Kazuki, someone of the same gender as her, someone the girl could make friends with. Hayashizaki reminds her that they are different genders after all. Hashikazi understands, but says that they look like a guy. All the girls around her are very strange. She feels that she and Kazuki can have a true friendship. The guys grabbed hands and Hayashizaki promised that he would not have any feelings for Hikari except friendly ones. She's really sorry. Hikara actually trusts the boy, but when he gets close to the man, he gets very nervous. She hopes that one day she will be able to hug her brother, as in one of the strong friendships that the girl has heard about. Hayashizaki Kazuki says that guys don't usually hug each other. A girl came to the guys saying that if they continue to take part in such children's games, even with their talent, their skills will fade. Looking at her, Hayashizaki Kazuki realizes that this gate is from an old branch of martial arts. Besides, the girl has seven swords with her. The girl is named Hikita Kohaku. She is a first-year swordsman and the president of the student council next year. The behavior of this girl reminds the boy of Mio, who also headed herself as the president of the student council. Hashikazi Hikara, as befits the vice president of the student council, extended her hand to shake. But Hikita Kohadu walked past the girl as if through a ghost. The swordsman completely ignored the vice president and went to the boy, saying that she had a request. Hayashizaki Kazuki noticed that the girl walked past Hikari. It would even annoy her. He remembered Kagwa saying something about Hashikazi having a strange playful side. Hashikazi Hikara stands behind the girl and wants to test her skills. Drawing her sword, she prepared to strike as well. As soon as Hikita Kohadu opened up, the vice president launched her attack from behind. The girl did not succeed. Kohadu tells the girl not to act like a child trying to measure the strength of a tiger. In the end, you can lose your life this way. The vice president of the student council of the magic division apologizes for his rudeness. The prank failed. Kazuki brings Kohada back to their conversation. The girl has a very serious face. Hayashizaki began to think that he would be challenged again and a duel would take place. Hikita Kohadu, gathering courage, tells the young man that she has come to ask for a wedding with him. Kazuki fell out of reality. The boy thinks it's weird, but it doesn't matter to the girl. It is much more important for her to become husband and wife in order to combine the Shinkage sword style of the house of Hikita and Hayashizaki style for the sake of creating a single invincible sword style. Hayashizaki Kazuki is absolutely sure that the Shinkage sword style is the old style from Kyushu. The young man realized that the girl wanted a wedding to enhance her sword style. Hikita Kohadu agrees with his words. They both honor the traditions of two of the few remaining styles in modern Japan designed for real battles. The girl considers it her duty that they should perfect these important arts. Hayashizaki Kazuki says that a girl shouldn't choose a partner just for something like that. A wedding is a desire to be with someone who is really important to you. Hikita Kohadu listens to these words and says that the guy puts romance above the sword style. He seems like a very modern guy to her. But in fact, it's not he who is fashionable, but the girl is incredibly old-fashioned. The girl decided to put the wedding aside and started talking about the team, about the first-class fencing team. She had heard that Kazuki was constantly failing while on the magic team. In this case, Kohadu invites the guy to join such a team, which she recently formed. She is stopped by the vice president of the student council of the magic division, who says that the young man cannot go on assignments, having only members of the swordsman school as companions. Hayashizaki Kazuki realized that Kohadu needed a swordsman with the title of magician. Now, thanks to the young man, magic is gradually changing its view of swordsmen. In any case, the disparity in the academy still exists. In the way a swordsman is perceived during quests, in the allocation of resources and the awarding of sacred treasures found during quests. If they wag their tails, they will become tame animals. In accordance with her goals, Hikita Kohadu wants Hayashizaki Kazuki to join her team consisting only of swordsmen. 
It's exactly as the girl said. With the results obtained, they will strive to raise the authority of swordsmen. Kohadu recalls the request in which Kazuki will take her as his wife. He is sorry, but, regardless of her reasons, the boy has no intention of leaving his team, which he has formed, because he's on a team with a very important person for him. Ikita Kohadu said she understood him and would respect his values, but then he just declares that he needs to become more important than his friend and if they become a couple, they will get married. The guy sees that the girl does not understand any romance and offers to just give up. Hikita Kohadu understands that she may be unworthy and does not understand anything about the intricacies of gentlemen's hearts, but the girl definitely wants to win the heart of Hayashizaki Kazuki. He agrees to be her friend, so he asks the girl to drop all formalities and asks her to call him by his first name. She has no choice. Hikita Kohadu blushed very much and cleared her throat before saying the guy's name. Stuttering, the girl calls the boy's name. The three of them were standing. There was a deathly silence between them. Hikita Kohadu suddenly ran away, screaming that she felt very embarrassed. Hashikazi Hikara found the swordsman a little strange, but cute. The young man realizes that among the swordsmen there are still those who hold a grudge against the magicians. The same thing happens among magicians. The vice president of the magic division wasn't sure what she would do if the boy accepted the girl's offer and disbanded the team with Mio. Hayashizaki Kazuki would never do that, because Mio is his dear partner. Hikara is also thinking. The girl has a request to the young man's team. The boy was surprised by this. The vice president said Kagu would most likely talk to them about it. After that conversation, they went to the mansion to freshen up after training. It was a busy morning. Upon arriving at the classroom, Hayashizaki Kazuki was inundated with questions about whether the young man had joined the team. The classmates wanted him to join them. The girls wouldn't let him pass. Kazuki explained that they wanted to think more about creating a team, so he left the girls unanswered. Hayakari Kyuk said that it would be possible to accept the offer of classmates instead of asking her. The boy reminds her that they don't want to team up with just anyone and says that the offer to join the team is still relevant. Kyuk found him too persistent, which caused a change in his heart. Solomon's ring notified the young man of this. The girl is in a bad mood and Kazuki didn't know what to do at first. He decided to make a face to make Kyuk laugh. She doubts that he will be able to do this and turned away from him in the other direction. The boy promises not to disappoint her. Turning to him, she does not believe to the last that he will be able to cheer her up. Hayashizaki Kazuki made the face of the popular Japanese anime character Ampaman. The power step, using the aura of charm, strengthens the facial muscles. This is a secret technique, transmitted in the style of Hayashizaki's secret art, the only look of death. Leem rejoices that the king is working and Kyuk's mood is improving. Lisa Westwood suddenly comes into the classroom, demanding to create silence from the threshold. She treats the class like trash. The professor wanted to ask a question, but noticed Hayashizaki Kazuki with his strange face. Lisa asked if he was okay. In response, the young man explained that this was a connection with the aura, which he could not fix now. Lisa Westwood continued her speech and informed the class that a new student had transferred to them. She demanded that the children not scream while the student introduced herself. The class is stunned. The boy remembers that this school accepts only students who received an enigma on their 14th birthday. There's no way this can happen later. A girl entered the classroom. Her name is Charlotte Lieben Frau. The new student flew here by plane from abroad. The professor said that the girl was her relative. She's only 14, but for certain reasons, she jumped over the classroom and got here. Her magical abilities are of the same power. This shouldn't be a problem. Charlotte Liebenfrau is not Japanese, but has Japanese citizenship. The girl asks to be called Lot. Hayashizaki Kazuki noticed that the girl was unexpectedly good at Japanese. During the teacher's explanation, he felt as if the girl was trying not to let people look at her too closely. The girl looks at Kazuki. He wondered why she was looking in his direction. The young man remembered his face. Charlotte Liebenfrau is delighted to say that he portrays the hero of Japanese animation. Hayashizaki gave a positive response. The young man also noticed that the girl's pronunciation is slightly different from English. All the freshmen of the second grade, Amasaki Mio, Hayashizaki Kazuki and Hikari Kyuk were invited to go to the student council office. All three freshmen came as they were told. They were met by Hashikazi Hikara, who informs them that Kago will be back soon. The president of the student council of the magic division burst into the office. She apologizes for keeping the students waiting. The girl is going to introduce them to a new friend. The new comrade's name is Charlotte Lieben Frau. This girl is a rank. The boy was very surprised when he saw the new girl. The professor tells Hayashizaki Kazuki that this may confuse him, but he should know that the girl is now an unusual student. 
Charlotte Liebenfrau is an exile who escaped from the Duchy of Seinmund in Northern Europe. Even without inheritance rights, she is the daughter of the duke currently ruling Seinmund. Watt is a foreign princess. Due to its achievements in magic, the Duchy of Seinmund is recognized as self-governing to a certain extent. However, it is essentially ruled by Germany. It is a small country in the north of Europe. Japan, America, Germany, Italy, Russia and China are the six countries most advanced in magic, supporting their various interests with the help of divine protection. Countries that have not received protection or under protectorate. Also, the seven great countries have never established diplomatic relations with other countries. That's because the more faith you have in the divine protection of what you believe in, the stronger it is. What cannot be said about the 72 pillars of Solomon. With the end of World War II, due to the birth of magic, the current of international unification began to collapse. If a war broke out between religious nations now, then thoughts of the destruction of the world would not be so far from reality. The magic in Seinmund originated not so long ago. In Europe, people born with a magical gift are nobles. If they were under the protectorate of one of the developed countries, their position would fall to the occupied territories. Because Lot is a princess and an exile, they don't know how this will affect the political situation. Now, for the sake of her protection and not forgetting about the need for training, this educational institution was chosen. Lot is now nothing more than an exile and is ready for any kind of relationship. Kazuki realized that they could keep an eye on her here, as well as on him. Amasaki Mio understood why the professor lied and said that the girl was her relative. Because of the dialect, it would be impossible to pass her off as Japanese. Lisa Westwood confirmed this, but it has already been three days since Lot arrived in Japan. And in those three days, she learned it. With the help of mind induction magic, she traced the relationship of consciousness and emotions to language and correlated their language with their native language. The girl is considered a genius in mind induction magic. Just like Hashikazi learned the sword style, Hayashizaki Kazuki thought about it. Why Lot ran away from her own strangeness? If possible, he would like to ask and find out. The boy started to say the word teacher, but Kyuk interrupted him, saying the same thing. Hayakari asks the professor why Lot fled her own country. She asks me to tell them. Lisa Westwood allowed the guys to show their strength. Charlotte Liebenfrau began to cast a spell and the light of summoning magic appeared. There is a little boy who is a diva. Liem materialized in space. Lemigetan approached this boy and began to mock him for being smaller than Liem. Kazuki swears at her, saying that she is competing in such stupidity. That's not what she meant. This guy has lost more strength and memory than she has. The boy confirms this by saying that he has lost most of his powers and memories. He doesn't even remember his name. Charlotte Liebenfrau says she called him a prophet. Only one thing is known with certainty. He is not a diva from Scandinavian mythology. Hayashizaki Kazuki notes that Germany is a part of Scandinavian mythology. Lisa explained that this was the reason for Lot's escape. The girl recently signed a contract with Germany, but if she signs a contract with a diva who does not belong to a national religion, the girl's life will be under total threat. Amasaki Mio asks the girl about the reason for agreeing to this contract. Lot said she was half human, half goddess. Charlotte Liebenfrau was born with an illness. At the age of 14, when she was already on the verge of death, a prophet appeared in her heart. In order to regain his powers, he captured the diseased parts of her body and saved her by replacing them. The boy says that he is forced to exist in the human body as a parasite. However, the prophet did not want to disturb the master's consciousness. For this, he had to choose someone who could accept and hold his essence. Lot was forced to give up everything and flee. The prophet did not have time to finish, because Charlotte interrupted him, saying that a lot of good things had happened. It happened because of the prophet. He gave her a healthy body, and she was able to go outside, escape to the country she had long dreamed of visiting. Hayashizaki Kazuki became alert. He wonders if the girl is really okay. He had heard of divas with evil intentions who would say anything to deceive the host. Like that time with Kay, Lisa calmed the frowning guy, saying that everything was fine. During the exam, there were no signs of Lot's personality being destroyed. Both of their minds are clearly distinguishable and not a bit mixed. But the professor, of course, cannot say this with complete certainty. Charlotte Liebenfrau says again that the escape was a success, thanks to the prophet. She was able to understand the principle of airplane flight. The boy was surprised that the diva had taught her this. He's wondering who he is. What a science-savvy diva. The girl says that this is not the kind of question that is asked to a person who has lost his memory. 
She asked the prophet the reason why he had lost his power. The boy said that he might not have any other memories, but he remembers his duty perfectly. His duty is to prevent the third disaster of Makia. Amasaki Mio thought about the caramel macchiato coffee. Lisa explains that, according to Greek mythology, two wars created the universe. The prophet confirmed her words. The third stage will be a battle of people with special powers with their enemies or something like that, as the boy said. The prophet has the ability to predict the future. He can only see really important events and quite vaguely. His duty was to confront someone and his diva. Taking this into account, most likely, the boy fought with the diva and lost. The result was memory loss. Kazuki remembered that Loki had also predicted the war of the divas. The third stage. The prophet does not know who or what will unleash this war on people. However, pointing at Hayashizaki Kazuki, the boy says that he will be able to defeat them and win. Due to the fact that this is a rather peculiar couple between a man and a diva, Lisa leaves the girl in the care of the witch hut. They can also keep an eye on her here. Odin Ashikawa is happy to take care of Charlotte Liebenfrau. The girl seems very nice to her. The professor turns to Hayashizaki Kazuki and Amasaki Mio, saying that this girl will join their team. Although little time has passed since she signed the contract, due to her dependence on her diva, Charlotte Liebenfrau's magic is very fast. This should compensate for the weakness of Kazuki's team. Hayashizaki expected this after what Hashikazi Hikari said in the morning. Now everything is happening exactly as the mentor intended. The boy says that he will gladly accept the girl into their team. Wad asked me to wait for the anime brother. She went up to him and kissed him on the cheek. Amasaki Mio screams in rage at what the girl did to Kazuki. Charlotte thanked her sister Mio as well. Amasaki began to look like a tomato. Wat thought that the girl would prefer a kiss on the lips and offered to do it again. Hayashizaki Kazuki warned her, saying that kissing only someone who is really important to her, especially on the lips, this is for someone who wants to protect at the cost of his life. It's like you're making a vow and putting your soul into it. Charlotte Liebenfrau understood and said that there was such a deep meaning behind this action. The young man looked at Mio and realized that she did not remember anything. The prophet, after making a bow, swears his devotion to Hayashizaki Kazuki. Solomon's ring activated the magic itself and added the boy to the schedule. Leem giggles, saying that she did not know that such a thing was even possible. She tells the king that he can unleash the strength to overcome all 72. While Hayashizaki Kazuki doesn't fully realize what Lemigetan said, Kagwa shouts that they are throwing a welcome party for Lot. The president of the student council of the magic division shouts to Kazuki to cook all his favorite dishes for Lot. He created sushi, tempura and maguro. Neo looked in on Kazuki, who was working fast. The guy said that he learned how to cook sushi in alchemical cooking. He just looked at what they were doing with the knife and repeated it. He's interested in learning something from Amasaki. The boy asked where Mio got the maid's uniform. The girl has been wearing it since she started working at home. She made it herself, she likes sewing. Kazuki thinks it's so cute that it's almost indecent. Giggling, Amasaki Mio approached Hayashizaki Kazuki and kissed him on the cheek. The boy clearly did not expect this. The embarrassed girl explained before leaving that it was only because they were throwing a party for Lot and she did it as a greeting. This is something like a second greeting. Placing his palm on the cheek where Mio kissed him, Kazuki silently watched her go. He did not expect such an action from his girlfriend. By enhancing perception, she can taste at the cellular level. Lot, watching an old anime, began to admire the beauty of Japan. She thanked me for the cooked food. Charlotte Liebenfrau is trying to use chopsticks, as is customary in Japan. It's not so easy for her. She wanted to hone her movements with mind induction. Hayashizaki Kazuki approached the girl with a piece of salmon and a stick. He fed the girl just like that. Potanashi Kagwa, Hashikazi Hikari and Amasaki Mio were stunned by this act. In a moment, three girls rushed to feed Charlotte Liebenfrau, because it looked very cute. Kagwa is so happy, just like a dream. Hayashizaki Kazuki, being on the sidelines, noticed out of the corner of his eye that Hayakara Kyuk was silently eating at a table in the distance. He turned to her, and the girl said that there was no need to worry and ask the same thing every time. The girl was very tasty. That's not why the boy came up to her. He said she should go and talk to everyone. Kyuk is not interested in the transferred student. From what she saw, everyone was acting very stupid. This did not stop the young man. He grabbed sushi with chopsticks and told Hayakari Kyuka to eat from his chopsticks. The girl is confused by this. She wonders why the boy always ignores what she is trying to tell him. After the welcome party, the girls decided to take a bath. While they were there, Hayashizaki Kazuki decided to start cleaning up. Lot appeared behind him and asked him to explain to her how to use the bathroom properly. 
Turning around, he saw that the girl was standing without clothes. There is a device in the bathroom that she does not understand and for some reason the prophet does not answer her call when she is naked. Hayashizaki Kazuki turned away from her. The girl does not understand why he does this, because it is indecent to turn away when talking. Blushing to the point of a tomato, he asks Lot to finally wrap herself in a towel. There is a special electric water heater in the bathroom. Kazuki explained how to use it. Charlotte Liebenfrau is delighted with this. This is the first time she has seen such a device and is glad that there is no need to use magic. The young man is surprised that in Sainman you need to use magic to do this. The average citizen would use it. But in the imperial court, daily life consists of magic. Germany practices Scandinavian mythology, which seeks to overcome the desire of the flesh. Among the mythologies of all advanced countries, it is one of the strictest. The use of machines is not part of the beliefs in Germany. Watt thinks cars are really amazing, but the Scandinavian myth system rejects the use of cars. There's nothing to do but regret it, as Charlotte Liebenfrau says. It is natural to remove people who have lost their powers from society. If a great power happens to be discovered, isn't it better to want to protect someone weaker? Shouldn't this feeling be considered natural? While Hayashizaki Kazuki was thinking about the question of the religion of Germany, Charlotte Liebenfrau pulled off his pants. He blushed like a tomato and asked Lot why she had just taken off his pants. The girl offers her brother to take a bath together. Kazuki explained that showing up without clothes is possible in the case of a special bond between a man and a woman. This is what couples do. Lot had only heard of something like this in a romantic comedy anime. Charlotte Liebenfrau blushed. The girl thinks she's fallen now because the way she looks now shouldn't be shown to a guy. Kazuki assures her that he didn't look and saw absolutely nothing. After all, he doesn't care about that at all. Charlotte Liebenfrau realized how carefree she was in her first love comedy. She felt very ashamed and asked to forget everything. Lemmigat and materialized to talk about a wonderful conversation in which they were both incredible. She offered to finish with the bathroom and go back to her room. Hayashizaki Kazuki had finished taking a bath and was already returning to his room. He noticed that the door was ajar. When he entered it, he saw Kagwa sitting on the bed in her combat outfit. The boy asked her about the same symptoms, but Kagwa said that everything was not what it seemed. The girl asked him to sit down. He sat down next to her and thought that the president of the student council of the magic division at the welcome party was fine. Otanashi Kagwa took the boy by the cheek, saying that he had received a lot of kisses today. The young man did not understand what she was talking about. She leaned on him with her whole body, saying that the young man has been spending all his time with Amasaki Mio lately, despite the fact that it makes her spend every day alone talking to the wall, hugging columns and suffering from Hikaru. Out of sadness, the girl began to talk to herself. Kagwa told him in his ear that she had heard what the knights were talking about during the mission. They said that the Scandinavian knights had already sent a request to Japan for Lot's extradition. Of course, if Japan hands over Charlotte Liebenfrau to Germany, except for the death sentence, nothing awaits her. Japan, of course, has no intention of doing this. Anyway, Japan is not the only religious country. If these countries were friendly, there would be no doubt that this would turn other countries against them. Germany does not care about Lot's fate. She will cooperate with them in capturing Locke. There is a group of elite Scandinavian knights that have already landed in Japan. They will cooperate with them for a month. After all, Loki is primarily a diva, who is hated in Scandinavian mythology. Thus, Loki will soon be in the hands of the knights. There is still a chance to save Kaya, so Kazuki wants to destroy Loki with his own hands. However, right now he can't take part in the hunt for him because of the futility. Kagwa is a little jealous because of the young man's concern for Mio. Hayashizaki Kazuki should focus on becoming stronger. Otherwise, he won't be able to protect anyone. That's what Adonashi Kagwa says to the boy. The young man realizes that the girl is right and he should stop fooling around. The president says that, for example, he should be more persistent in trying to get to the end with Kagwa. Hayashizaki Kazuki suddenly realized that the president of the student council of the magic division had heard about the power of Lemmageddon from Professor Lisa. Grabbing her by the shoulders, he pushed her away from him. Walk from Kagwa to the end. Even if he said to end up with a girl like her, the young man doesn't know what to do. The president says that when he stares at her like that, it's a hundred times more embarrassing than when she hugs him. Hayashizaki Kazuki suddenly took his hands away, apologizing for what he had done. The girl runs away from him in embarrassment, telling him to forget about what she just said. The door slams shut behind her. The door opens again and Kagwa looks out from behind it, saying that the boy should remember what she said about knights in Germany. The president is very ashamed and, saying goodnight, the girl ran away. 
The boy showed the scoreboard with the percentages and realized that he needed to do something before Loki was captured. Kani, pointing his finger at Hayashizaki Kazuki, shouts that he has been promiscuous and promiscuous lately. The young man never thought that the day would come when he, stupid, would criticize her. The sister is outraged that the boy is going to study with a beautiful girl. She thinks he intends to rise to the lever of adulthood. Kazuki says that, in exchange for learning Kenjutsu, Hashikazi teaches him magic. Ikari asks Kani not to be so touchy. The vice president says that, compared to her, Kani is so cute that words cannot describe it. She lifts the president of the fencing division's head with her hand to look at her pretty face. The older sister rushed behind her brother. She screams that there is something dangerous in this person. Hikari allegedly exudes a dangerous aura. The young man thinks that she is a very beautiful girl and from time to time, like Kani now, she is also charming. Hashikazi was embarrassed by these words. The vice president of the magic division asks the boy not to joke like that. He will not be taken seriously when it is really necessary. Charlotte Liebenfrau came running to them, who was looking for Hayashizaki Kazuki to talk to him. She started talking about last night. Watts says cheerfully and sincerely that she doesn't mind now. Last night, she walked around Kazuki without clothes. Hashikazi Hikari and Hayashizaki Kani heard this. He doesn't understand why Lot came running and told him about it right now. The elder sister is furious at this, she grabbed the hilt of the sword. This is the worst scenario of his life. While the boy is trying to stop the blade of the blade, Hashikazi Hikara asks the president to calm down. This is due to the fact that there are many comrades in the witch hut now. Kani screams that this is unacceptable. Amasaki Mio and Hikari Kyuk are one thing, but a foreign girl is another. She decided to check on Lot personally. Hikita Kohaku runs to Kani, who shouts that she will take over the testing of creatures that want to follow Kazuki. The president of the fencing division asks the girl why she appeared here. Kohaku is an outstanding first-year student and joined the student council as a student. However, personalities like her cause a lot of problems. Kani noticed that she was hiding in the bushes. The girl explained that she was dealing with Kazuki, but she realized that she had chosen the wrong time to show herself. Akita came to demonstrate to the young man that she could become a good bride. She made a bento and offered to have lunch with her. And, of course, marry Kohaku. The older sister is furious at what all the girls are doing. She angrily shouts that Kazuki is marrying her. The girls are figuring things out. They also touch on the topic of Adonashi Kagwa. The boy asks to talk about the president of the magic division in the student council office. Kani calmed down and says that what is more important now is that Charlotte Liebenfrau is trying to get closer to Kazuki. Lot realized that she was being challenged to a duel. In other words, if she wins, she can stay with the others at the witch's hut. If so, then the girl agrees to do it. The vice president of the student council of the magic division informs that this fight will not be an official duel, and ordered that the fight end without injury. Charlotte Liebenfrau uses summoning magic. The boy looks at her transformation, waiting for Descartes bridges. Charlotte Liebenfrau's combat outfit turned out to be a bikini. The vice president of the student council announces the start of the match. Lot, in a duel against Hikita Kohaku, uses a heavy magical weapon, Mitrailza. Kazuki is stunned by the girl's magic level. Kohaku works in front of cannon fire, she has good reflexes. Kani said that her school is based on the technique of fighting magic. For Hayashizaki's school, forecasting alone is impossible, but she replaces it with intuition. As expected, it is impossible to dodge all the bullets, but it is safe to say that the crushing force of the bullet is relatively weak. Lot does not have enough stopping power needed to fight against swordsmen. Kohaku wanted to strike, but she thought she had calculated something wrong. But no, it seemed to her. This is Susan Hofer. Charlotte Liebenfrau has armor polished with protective magic. Hikita Kohaku shouts to the girl that she turned out to be very resilient. However, if she gets into a crack in the armor, she can win. Charlotte Liebenfrau activated the collider field. A huge armor appeared on her, like a robot's. She shouts to her opponent that she should not be underestimated. In that case, the swordswoman decided to strike with her sword. She almost did, but she felt the gaze of the president of the student council of the fencing division. Hashikazi Hikara shouted that the fight was over. The continuation will be a hindrance to others. What to say about the fight? He was defeated by Charlotte Liebenfrau. The girl is jumping happily. There's nothing stopping her from being with Kazuki now. Kohaku is disappointed with the outcome of the fight. Her abilities are still at that level. She is annoyed, but needs to make some adjustments. She asked me to try her bento sometime. The vice president of the student council of the magic division noticed that this duel broke the girl from the inside. 
but thanks to her, they were able to see Lot's magic. Of course, the professor mentioned Charlotte's quick summoning, but there is a problem with the pattern of her magical attacks. The boy wants to ask Lisa about it later. The young man came to the professor to talk about how Charlotte compensates for the weaknesses of their team. He reports that he watched Lotta fight in the morning. Lisa is wondering how it went. Kazuki says it's interesting. A team consisting of Mio, Lotta and him can kill fierce persistent enemies. The guy has guesses how to use fire and electric attacks, but they are both based on a thermal element. The professor addressed the young man as trash, saying that they should try to carry out an electric attack. If they look at the wound, they will easily understand the difference. There are two aspects of an electric burn. First, an electric burn occurs inside. So even if the opponent is covered with heat-resistant leather or armor, the damage comes from the inside. It will still be effective. Secondly, an electrical attack can destroy the nervous system. Many animals use electrical signals. A strong charge will have an impact on this activity. People also use a discharge to start the heart or vice versa. Hashikazi Hikara honed her magic skills by traveling the world. It can strengthen muscles and nerves throughout the body with electricity. According to the report, the boy accepted the task with slugs. Based on the professor's combat experience, electric attacks are most effective against slime. Their body consists of a nucleus that sends electrical signals to organs made of mucus. Therefore, if a strong current is passed through them, they will die and only mucus remains. It was a lesson for Hayashizaki Kazuki. Lisa Westwood says that students who ask teachers questions are especially gifted with intelligence. For their group, Charlotte Liebenfrau can now be the solution to all problems. The professor says that the guys should try again this Saturday, in order for Amasaki Mio's rank not to fall down. The boy wonders if things will really go up because Lot joined the team. Kazuki tells the girl that her presence is encouraging. Last time, things were going well before the red slime appeared. Lot said she would keep the electric attack spell on standby. Amasaki Mio points at the guys on the other street. The Japanese Order of Chivalry wears a white uniform and one person in black. These are German agents. They are most likely hiding Loki's quest. In the last few days, the arrival of the German elite in Japan has become the main news in the media. They will cooperate with Japan for a month to defeat Loki. Naturally, insider information about the negotiations is hidden from the news. The fact that they saw them now was considered bad luck. Charlotte is very much afraid, and she snuggled up to Kazuki. First of all, the young man must calm her down. On the other hand, Mio joined in. The girl is a little jealous. Because of this, Hayashizaki Kazuki found it very difficult to walk and so they started again. Mio was grabbed by tentacles for the second time. The boy is trying his best to help his partner. Amasaki is freed from these creatures, and Kazuki shouts at Charlotte to use an electric attack on the red slime. Watt uses the collider field, firing electric charges into the slime, and Mio uses wing wings to burn them. They were done with this area, but the girls ended up in slime. This liquid affected the girls' brains, and they began to molest Kazuki. Earlier, in the same area, they passed a lake. The boy thought that the girls would be able to wash off the mucus there. They were fooling around, splashing in the water. The area around the lake is returning to its former state. This whole region is mostly liberated. After that, you will have to go deeper. Hayashizaki, standing on land, was called into the water by the girls. They washed off all the mucus, but the boy noticed that the girls' clothes had become completely transparent. The embarrassed guy turns away, saying that there will be problems if the uniform gets wet. The girls were upset. Kazuki noticed a fox out of the corner of his eye. Taking his blade, the boy informed his companions that he would look around. Hayashizaki Kazuki walked around the area. The moment he entered there, the surroundings seemed to have changed only slightly. Going up the stairs, the boy wonders what is at the end. Looking up, he found the shrine in the dungeon. Upon entering the shrine, Amasaki Mio, Charlotte Liebenfrau and Hayashizaki Kazuki discovered the Divine Blade. This is a sacred weapon that can be found in the dungeon. Sacred weapons are legendary magical items that appeared in this world under the influence of strong magical power. It absorbs the host's powers and is also the cause of phenomena beyond our understanding. Since this divine blade originally belonged to the temple, it most likely turned into a sacred weapon when magical powers filled it. Touching it, the blade begins to absorb magical powers. Neo suggests that this blade could be somehow connected with one of the Japanese legends and, as a test, suggests to see what it is capable of. Hayashizaki Kazuki wanted to start checking, but someone stopped him from the doorway, saying that the acquisition of personal sacred weapons is strictly prohibited. It was a girl accompanied by her partner. She demands that the young man give the blade to her personally. 
The guy is wondering why the Knight's Order sent people of this level to search. He explains to the girl that they wanted to give the sword along with the mission report. The girl brazenly snatched the blade from Kazuki's hands and barked something about a swordsman who is a child and possesses a sacred weapon. Turning around, the brazen girl told her partner, named Kondu, that they were leaving. The three guys accompanied the couple in silence. Amasaki Mio shouts indignantly that you can't be so arrogant. Watt screams that such charlatans will never become as strong as Kazuki. The young man, in turn, offered to leave everything as it is and move on. However, Kazuki speaks softly, precisely because the sacred weapon was a sword. He wanted and had to do it. Charlotte Lieben Frau, Amasaki Mio and Hayashizaki Kazuki fight in a fair fight with various monsters, clearing the zone of evil spirits. The guys are done. All enemies are defeated and the natural landscape is almost restored. That's it. Kazuki seems to have used up all his magic power, although there is still some left. The mentor said that they have a good team. If the guys continue like this, then maybe they will be given other tasks. The girl sat down on the ground. Neo and Hayashizaki were worried about their partner. Charlotte Liebenfrau reassured them, saying that she was fine and just a little tired. The girl is not very hardy. It is not surprising that Charlotte does not tolerate heavy loads. She's been in bed all her life. Kazuki offered to carry Lot in his arms, to which she gladly agreed. Neo is outraged that he will do this. The young man's face changed in an instant. The guy screams that he felt a giant sweat of magical power. Amasaki Mio felt it too. Hayashizaki Kazuki doesn't know what it is because he was sure that they had cleaned up everything here. He wonders how much magical power there is on this earth. It was a blonde female knight. She noticed that the team had cleared the dungeon, which means they have enough strength to celebrate. The magician rushed towards the children and Hayashizaki Kazuki screams for the girl to fight the enemy. The boy asks why she, the German knight, is attacking them. She screams that he is pathetic, although Kazuki shouted that no one wants to fight with her. The knight struck Hayashizaki's blade. The young man noticed that her strength had increased a hell of a lot. He worries that the girl might increase it even more. From her attacks, the boy's hands began to go numb. The German knight asks him why he doesn't answer anything. In response to this, Kazuki began to cast a spell. Hayashizaki Kazuki used a wall of fire, hoping to get rid of the enemy. Unfortunately, nothing worked and the girl was unharmed. She called this attack very pathetic and weak. The girl challenges him, forcing him to show everything he is capable of. Kazuki wonders who created this monster to attack them. Even if they continue the fight, Hayashizaki has no chance of winning. He is thinking about buying the right amount of time to escape from the German knight. A girl's voice was heard behind him, asking the knight what he had forgotten here. It was those knights who had brazenly taken the sacred weapon earlier. This couple recognized the German knight. The opponent noticed that she sees people who know her. This is Loki's suppression team. Hayashizaki Kazuki shouts at the guy not to do this, warning that the girl is not someone who can be easily defeated. Kondu, in turn, wanted to launch an attack, but the German knight easily knocked the guy's weapon out of his hands. She thought he would be able to entertain her like that Hayashizaki Kazuki, but she is not interested in him, so she wants to strike a fatal blow. The young man could not afford it and decided to distract his rival. Armed with a blade, he struck, but the knight defended herself with her shield. Hayashizaki Kazuki shouts that they must find an opportunity and reach level 5. The knight was surprised that she was fighting with a student and noticed that he was good for a child. The young man says that the girl should not put a price tag on him, he does not rate her. The knight recalled that there had been talk of escape and found it hilarious. If they were talking about running away, then she wouldn't hold back anymore. The opponent told them to get ready and began to cast a spell. The girl shouted for everyone to enjoy fighting her to the very end. She summons F. Jernug, Thor's mother, to bury everyone. Hayashizaki Kazuki was struck by a powerful flow of energy. It's like he's been grilled. The boy, after this attack, realizes that there is no chance of escape. He wants Mio and Charlotte to stay fine. Suddenly there was a powerful explosion. The giant of Muspelsheim appeared behind the German knight. The girl was very scared of this and asked the guy if he had any options. Hayashizaki Kazuki is stunned by what he saw. Someone has summoned a demon and it reminds him of something. He sees a familiar silhouette on a tree branch. It was Kaya, who was smiling sweetly at him. The girl says that she came to save Hayashizaki Kazuki. Hayashizaki Kazuki doesn't know who summoned him, but if he creates a moment to escape, then it will be a winning chance. He shouts at Amasaki Mio to start casting a spell. The boy's partner began to recite a spell, mentioning the phoenix. The young man rushed away from the German knight, who is furious that the guys still want to escape. 
Amasaki Mio and Hayashizaki Kazuki have phoenix wings. The guy picked up Charlotte Liebenfrau in his arms, and they began to gradually move away from their rival, saying that they needed to get out before it was too late. The German knight shouts for them to slow down. The fight is not over yet. At this moment, a huge fist of the giant Muspelsheim flies at her. From the attack of this huge demon, the girl defended herself with her sword. She is in a losing situation. The knight began to cast a spell, cursing the little ones who had run away from her. A huge viking appeared behind her, holding a warhammer in his hand. She does not intend to give up and run away in the same way. The giant Muspelsheim was about to strike, but missed. The girl easily dodges slow blows. In her hand was a hammer, which is equipped with a huge amount of energy. The German knight towered over the giant and shouted for him to taste it. She used M. Jolnir. The force was so powerful that the giant Muspelsheim did not have time to understand anything and crumbled into pieces. Holding Charlotte Liebenfrau in her arms, Hayashizaki Kazuki tells her friend that they are splitting up here. If a girl could use such magic, then the outcome would be fatal. Hayashizaki Kazuki tells his female partners that he will give a report himself and tells them to go to rest after the incident. When Amasaki Mio and Charlotte Liebenfrau went to the witch's hut, the boy turned around and noticed Professor Lisa. It is to her that he wants to report. Afterwards, Lisa Westwood reports that the one who attacked them was from the Thor group, named Beatrix Bonger. The girl left the hostel in the afternoon and went to Okutama. After that, she attacked Kazuki's team in order to kill Charlotte Liebenfrau. But, officially, they were not attacked. The young man says that the knight attacked them without understanding anything. In other words, the country and the order of knights did not initially intend to protect Charlotte. The professor confirmed the boy's words. Japan did not accept Germany's offer as it respects the lives of exiles. They are not going to cooperate to defeat Loki. Since there is no united front between the countries, they are least concerned about its security. Charlotte Liebenfrau will die as a result of an accident, and if it's an accident, there's nothing you can do about it. This is how Lisa West would put it in general terms. This angered Hayashizaki Kazuki. The young man shouts at the professor to stop beating around the bush. He was finally angered by the words that nothing can be done. He assumes that his meeting with Charlotte Liebenfrau is also part of an ideal plan to kill her. The professor, remaining calm, reports that from the point of view of the Japanese government, maintaining good relations with foreign countries is extremely important. There is no other method to keep the balance between the countries. He reminds her that Lot was supposed to die of an illness and now an entire nation is trying to take her life. Lisa Westwood reports that current Japan does not have the required territory to take care of everyone who comes to the country. Hayashizaki Kazuki is furious that the government cannot fight this. He thinks it's unfair. Professor Liz says that the boy cannot accept this and asks him, calling him garbage, what he is going to do next in this case. If it's an accident, then there won't be any problem if someone accidentally saves her. Hayashizaki Kazuki will defend Charlotte Liebenfrau. Lisa Westwood smiled back. Apologizing to him, she says that she hoped for him to say something similar at the very beginning. The boy is very surprised by this and does not understand what the professor is saying now. She was given orders to silence him after Charlotte died. However, as she realized, it's almost impossible to shut the guy up. In addition, two of his team members can use 5th level Phoenix magic. If they concentrate on escaping, then the probability of survival is quite high. Hayashizaki Kazuki now realized that Professor Liz just wanted to see his reaction. He thought it was a stupid game. She reports that the young man is still underestimated, although he has great power. It was for this reason that the professor entrusted Charlotte to him. Lisa Westwood repeats her words that Hayashizaki is indeed King Solomon. The professor asks the boy to save Charlotte Liebenfrau. Hayashizaki Kazuki, as expected, really needs the power of the king in order to protect what he wants to protect. Lisa Westwood managed to keep him quiet, and he calls Charlotte for another assignment. Beatrix will attack them again. She also won't have much time to prepare, just about a month. If they stop it at least once, they will be able to officially declare it. During the period of cooperation it will be most effective. Kazuki realizes that they must be able to withstand this attack. He started talking about Kogwa. Lisa Westwood reports that this is not possible. If the student council president were on stage, she would put the Japanese government at a disadvantage. However, the guys have no chance against her. The professor recalls that the young man King Solomon and Charlotte Liebenfrau's diva were initially quite powerful. If Hayashizaki Kazuki copes, then he will have enough strength to defeat his enemy. The girl says that the preparation time is limited. She says that the young man should raise the level of compatibility with Charlotte Liebenfrau as much as possible. 
Kazuki told all this to Lem again, who was sitting on the guy's shoulders. She says it goes against common sense, but things are taking an interesting turn. The young man only asked why Lim was sitting on his shoulders like a child. However, there is something else that Hayashizaki Kazuki does not understand. A demon that appeared in the middle of the fight with Beatrix. Thanks to him, they were able to escape, but it is unknown who called him. He suspects it was Kaya. As the boy walked forward, chatting with Lim, a familiar figure appeared in front of him. Kazuki fell into a stupor when he saw her. It was Kaya who tells him that quite a long time has passed. The girl, since the last meeting, began to look different. Hayashizaki Kazuki does not understand what is happening, because Loki stole Kaya's body. He was alarmed that the girl was still in this form. Kaya says the boy is confused. Loki is inside her. Her body was stolen by Loki. However, instead of dissolving her soul, Loki took control of her. These words alerted the guy. Loki says that it's much more interesting this way. Thus, he can use her as a pawn to play with the king. In other words, the girl is Loki and at the same time Kaya. The young man sees that this is how Kaya's soul still remains. If he completely erased Loki's magic power and sealed it, he could save Kaya. The girl told him to stop. If her soul is really dear to him, then the young man should not take such a desperate step to save her. She really doesn't want to lose this power. Besides, Hayashizaki Kazuki won't be able to defeat Loki right now. The girls giggle. She reports that, compared to her previous strength, there is much more of it now. The guy thinks that Kaya came here to please him with her appearance, but no. She has a suggestion. For the sake of defeating their common enemy, Beatrix Baumgart, Kaya considers it a reasonable decision to join forces. Only problems can arise if someone sees them together. Therefore, he recommends that she come to him through the window. She looks around the room and laughs at the fact that everything is scattered on the floor. Kaya thought this was the first time a girl had visited him. But no, the residents of the mansion constantly walk here. The girl says that, for some reason, she now wants to kick all the girls in this mansion. Hayashizaki Kazuki said that Loki really is in it. After these words, a skull appeared. The guy looked at the scoreboard and saw that Kaya appeared there with a 50% level of sympathy. Kazuki doesn't understand why he would want to win Kai's heart, but this is proof that she sincerely wants to cooperate with the boy. Due to the injury, Loki's divine soul was damaged. Being in a spiritual form, he restores energy. Loki can wake up at any moment, but he won't be in the best shape. In addition, Loki is not experienced enough in close combat, and Beatrix Baumgart will be a difficult opponent. Therefore, Loki wants to join forces with a melee master like Kazuki. Cross swords with a knight blessed by Thor using only Kenjutsu skills. Kaya thinks he's abnormal because normal people would back off. Hayashizaki Kazuki angrily replies that only the girl here is abnormal. He reminds her that he did not agree to work with her. Kaya, sitting on the bed, calls the young man stubborn. Since she can use Loki's power, the girl will be a good helper in battle. She realized that he didn't want to agree because of Loki. The guy says that this is exactly the case, because he does cruel things. Kaya replies to the young man that Loki is not as bad as it seems from the outside. Loki was supposed to take revenge on the Scandinavian gods and bring chaos to the world. Therefore, she attacks the Knight's Order and unites illegal magicians to gather comrades, but Loki constantly tries to avoid killing people. As Kaya says, Loki goes too far and can kill someone just like Amasaki Mio. These words make Kazuki angry. Hayashizaki is more concerned about the appearance of illegal magicians. There are cases when they devoured the souls of their victims. Of course, the boy had never heard of him killing anyone. The young man did not finish because the girl interrupted him. She was scared at first too. When Kaya was absorbed, the girl felt very good. These words unsettle the boy. Kaya says that initially, the people who were involved in illegal contracts were mostly those whose hearts were consumed by chaos. Chaos is the desires and impulses of living beings who are unable to reject the illusion behind the veil of legends. The gods will begin to use the concept of norm as a source of control over people, and will spread chaos from behind the scenes. For Hayashizaki Kazuki and his mentality, it is impossible to comprehend the nature of chaos. The 72 pillars of Solomon are aligned. There is no order, no chaos. For Kazuki, as a basilius monarch with hereditary power, this will be of great importance in the search for allies. The girl did not finish, because the guy continued the phrase for her. In other words, to fully understand Loki, he needs to join forces with him. Kazuki assumed that was what Kaya was trying to tell him. The girl jumped on his neck to hug him, joyfully exclaiming that the boy had hit the nail on the head. She just wanted him to think about who she was now, about Kai. They need to come up with a plan. 
She only has Loki's guile, but the girl can give an idea of how they should fight. After all, Loki is her diva and he knows Thor's abilities. Hey Shizaki Kazuki will mainly deal with melee attacks. Other enemy attacks should be interrupted in order to deplete the magical power of Beatrix Baumgart. Although, if Thor manages to cast high-level spells, it would be better to think about how to get away from the battlefield unharmed. However, if they concentrate on escaping, then they won't be able to do anything if they are attacked. Almost all of Thor's summoning spells have a weakness, they can only be invoked during combat. Thor is the one who hears the voices of warriors only in the thick of battle, and therefore its volume of usable tactics is narrow. In other words, if Kazuki can fend off the knight's attacks, then it will be an endurance fight. If you think about it, after trying to attack last time, her magic power didn't seem to decrease at all. She has a full set of armor which grants protection. Attack methods that deal through damage will be the most effective. Hayashizaki Kazuki remembered the attacks with internal effects, the electric attacks that Charlotte Liebenfrau possesses. In addition, Beatrix Bongart brought from Germany a shield that could withstand even the fiery iron fist of the giant Muspelsheim. This is the legendary sacred weapon Slaven. It has absolute resistance to fire. It goes without saying that the light of Amasaki Mio is nothing more than a simple toy, while Beatrix Bongart holds a shield in her hands. Hayashizaki Kazuki understands that even with such valuable information, the knight is still a very strong opponent. Kaya notices that with proper preparation, everything should go like clockwork. During these days, the boy is going to make every effort to eliminate demons, but the main task of Hayashizaki Kazuki will be to raise the compatibility level of Charlotte Liebenfrau as much as possible. The boy is doomed by this, as he believes. The girl reminds that the diva lot is very powerful. Kaya is surprised that even the professor has no idea about the true nature of the prophet. She wished you a good time with Charlotte. It annoys him. Instead of being alone with Charlotte, he suggests inviting Amasaki Mio with him to strengthen their team. If Lot feels at ease, her compatibility level should increase. Kaya calls Hayashizaki Kazuki an idiot. If he wants to consider this as a bet, then being alone with Charlotte Liebenfrau, the boy will have a higher chance. The girl said that despite the fact that Amasaki Mio thinks of Lot as her little sister, girls remain girls. Hayashizaki Kazuki turned away and thought about her words. He was hailed by Kaya, who said that the last train had already left. She wants to stay the night. The girl really wants to spend the night alone with him. It is filled with such chaos that it defies description. Hayashizaki Kazuki opened the window, saying that she should go straight first, then turn left, and then go far away. Kaya was upset by this response. Pouring himself water, the boy thought about the words that it was necessary to increase the level of compatibility with Charlotte Liebenfrau. They think it's like it's that simple. He doesn't understand if the young man is doing the right thing at all. In any case, in order to make a decision, Hayashizaki Kazuki must talk to Charlotte. Charlotte Liebenfrau appeared in the kitchen, drinking milk. She learned from the anime that people do this in Japan after getting out of the tub. Besides, Lot has heard that her breasts will get bigger if she drinks milk. I wonder what came over her. She didn't think about such things. She doesn't have such big shapes. She's embarrassed because her body is small and thin. Charlotte Liebenfrau asked Hayashizaki Kazuki about the girl who attacked them at the end of the quest. She realized that the girl was her target. He understands that it was impossible not to notice. Charlotte Liebenfrau says that, as expected, she causes problems for others. Wherever she goes, she causes problems everywhere. The young man calms her down, saying that he is glad to meet them and protect her at any cost. When he was an orphan, the guy also thought that there was no place on earth where he was needed. However, there are people who accepted him in the place he was able to call home. Hayashizaki Kazuki placed his palms on Charlotte Liebenfrau's cheeks and invited her to go on a date just the two of them. The boy wants to show her the beauty of this world, the place where she belongs. Lot hadn't expected this. The next day, the guy is standing near the school gate, as they agreed, but Lot is still not there. Charlotte Liebenfrau appeared at that moment, apologizing for having to wait a long time. Hayashizaki Kazuki was amazed at how she looked. After all, she looks like a princess. The young man admires her appearance and compliments her. The girl said that these were clothes she bought in Samund. Embarrassed, Charlotte Liebenfrau asks what they will really spend the day like in a romantic comedy, a date between a man and a woman. Hayashizaki Kazuki suddenly put his hand on Lot's thigh, which she didn't even know about. The guy had a feeling that this was too much, but he offered to go. Melting into a smile, Lot happily agreed. Charlotte Liebenfrau wanted to go to Akihabara. Walking down the street, Lot is amazed by the beauty of Japan. She had never seen such streets in the anime. 
the guy suggested watching some anime. Charlotte Liebenfrau said that she loves anime about a romantic relationship between a man and a woman. Lot points her finger at one of the storefronts, saying that she wants to go there. Summon Spirit, Cosplay Cafe, Solomon, Wonderland. The young man does not understand what is wrong with these shops. Lot gets nothing from these names except cute vibes. They are greeted by Asteroth Keshoko, Zeppa Fujo, and Gamiagan Kanako. These are female employees who parody the 72 Pillars of Solomon. This is a cosplay cafe. The Pillars of Solomon are popular with the locals, so this is not surprising to them. They were approached by Astero Kishoko, who noticed that the couple was in this cafe for the first time. The girl informs that, in addition to food and drinks, they also lend Solomon suits and offers to try it. Hayashizaki Kazuki gladly agreed and wanted to try it. The employee says they are demons. The boy saw ordinary cute puppies in front of him, so fluffy and funny. The young man succumbed to the love of the puppies and let them cuddle him. The guys in the crowd saw the German knight, who is still on this street and is chasing them. Ultimately, no matter where the girl goes, she is being chased by a black shadow. Trembling with fear, she realizes that there is no place where she will be accepted. Hayashizaki Kazuki puts his hand on her shoulder and comforts her, saying that everything is fine, because he will be next to her. Charlotte Liebenfrau has another place she would like to go with the boy. This is a photo booth. In Saemund, people with great magical power are seen as a hindrance. Even for someone like Charlotte, whose life is very fragile, like a candle in the wind, there are those who would put it out. People who would use it would despise it. The people around her had various ulterior motives. They were all lying. However, since Lot came to this country, Kazuki has treated her as a person and said he would protect her. It makes her so happy that her heart beats faster. She shouts that she loves Hayashizaki Kazuki and leans against him while taking photos in a photo booth. If there is a future, she wants to develop a special romantic relationship with him. Lot thinks she's too spoiled. Charlotte Liebenfrau hands Hayashizaki Kazuki a series of photographs, saying that it will be a memory of the day they spent together. The boy took a series of pictures. After looking at the contents of the photo, he smiled. Charlotte Liebenfrau didn't just lean against him. At the moment of the photo, she touched her lips to his cheeks, which made them look so cute. Hayashizaki Kazuki was hailed by someone. Turning around, he saw a man with glasses. The man is glad to see the boy. The man is Lisa Westwood's work partner, currently practicing Kenjutsu. His name is Tsuhara Hisataba. The man chuckled, saying that he did not understand the boy's fighting style. Hayashizaki Kazuki realizes that Tsuhara Hisataba is one of those who intelligently brandishes a sword. The young man said that he thinks if Kani learns from someone like a man, the girl will reach great heights. Suhara Hisataba laughed at the boy's words and thanked him for the compliment. He said that there are actually people who would like to talk to Kazuki. The man opens the door and asks the young man to come through. Kondo and that girl were sitting at the table. These are the knights they met in the dungeon forest. The guy sitting at the table thanks for the help the boy provided in battle. Kazuki introduced himself and the guys followed him. The guy's name is Kondo Hajime, a patrolling horse from the Central Order of Knights. The girl's name is Soma Yukari, she is also, like Kondo, a patrolling horse. Yukari proudly says that she is here only because her partner insisted on it. She confusedly thanks them for the fact that the boy saved their lives. Kondo Hajime informs Hayashizaki Kazuki that the girl is always like that, but is not a bad person. Soma Yukari shouts at his partner and throws a mug at him so that he does not say what is not asked. In fact, the guys were specially sent to the dungeon that day. They didn't say anything specific. At this point, they encountered Kazuki and Beatrix's group. After that, they were ordered to remain silent. After that, everything was explained. However, when the guys found out the details, they came to the conclusion that Hayashizaki Kazuki was not strong enough to stand up against Beatrix. Kondo Hajim holds out a closed box, saying that they would like to return what they confiscated from Kazuki's group. The sacred weapon, the Reikiri. Since it was unofficial, there were no procedures at the Reikiri warehouse either. Because of this, they were able to take him without making any fuss. The boy thought about the stolen sacred weapon. Hayashizaki Kazuki asked Suhara Hisataba if this was normal. The man explained that the weapons would just gather dust in the warehouse. Suhara Hisataba hopes that giving the sacred weapon into the hands of a boy will be the right decision. Kondo Hajime agrees, adding that the teacher also has a couple of weapons somewhere under the table. The man told the guy to hold his tongue. Soma Yukari told her partner not to get carried away and to be careful with words. A swordsman is someone who nobly sacrifices everything for the sake of justice. Hayashizaki Kazuki hopes that with this sword he will be able to free Charlotte Liebenfrau from the shadow that haunts her life. The boy brought Amasaki Mio and Lot to a large building. 
he informs that this time, the quest will take place in this place. The landscape has mostly been restored. In other words, Kaya must have already infiltrated this place and killed all the mobs. Kaya tells Hayashizaki Kazuki that he is late. Since this quest is small, she killed almost everyone, although she didn't even try. Amasaki Mio saw her old friend. She ran to greet her. Mio asks if Kaya is okay. The girl says that they regret what they did. After all, she and Loki tried to kill them together. Amasaki Mio was very scared by this. Her joy in her face was replaced by a huge tension. Her old friend's words fell like a stone on her shoulders. Charlotte Liebenfrau wanted to say something about Kai, but Hayashizaki Kazuki said not to worry about anything. They temporarily joined forces. The boy says they have prepared well. But Beatrix has become very suspicious. Four is the god of Scandinavian legends. In any case, the guys won't be able to hide from her for a long time. They were interrupted by Beatrix Bongart, who appeared. She says the kids understand her quite well. The knight managed to miss Hayashizaki Kazuki. The German knight made her move. The boy tells the girl to start whenever she wants. Kaya made a call to Bluffgang and says that the girl will shed her blood for the benefit of the Scandinavian gods. Charlotte Liebenfrau apologizes to her friends saying that everyone is in trouble again because of her. Amasaki Mio calms her friend down. They will prove that they are able to protect her. The boy attacked the enemy first. Beatrix Bongart calling the young man a good boy. He hopes that the girl will like it and the young man activated the electric shock with an armored hand. The opponent was thrown aside. She saw that it was a summoning of magic. Hayashizaki Kazuki activated the balloon. Beatrix Bongart screams that this level of summoning magic will not destroy her defenses. In her hands is the same shield. Beatrix noticed Amasaki Mio and Charlotte Liebenfrau approaching. They simultaneously activate Brand Mount and Lightning. Beatrix Bongart dodged a double attack. This is a very insidious way of fighting. The girl was alarmed by this. She heard Kai's voice asking her about the dragon. Turning around, Beatrix saw a huge dragon that was ready to devour her with guts. On his head was Kaya, who wants her rival to become the prey of the dragon. Beatrix Bongart smiled and activated the Megajord. It was the instant death of a summoned dragon. The enemy attacks his opponent, who was left unprotected. Kaya defends herself with her blade. Beatrix realized that she had also called that big man at the first meeting. In response, Kaya just smiles, without giving an exact answer. She moves away from the common enemy by activating Fioram. She understands that close combat is not really her thing. Beatrix Bongart noticed the feathers that belonged to Freya. She launched an attack that sent Kaya flying away. She asks her why the suppression squad didn't find her. Standing over the seated girl, Beatrix tells her that she has finally found Loki. He smiles, saying that he was burned and adds that Freya didn't actually use it herself. Beatrix Bongart smiles, believing that he will now easily destroy Loki with the help of Fergenmen. Her attack was interrupted by Hayashizaki Kazuki, who is defending his comrade. The girl is angry at this behavior. Japanese swords can even cut through lightning, regardless of the number of lightning bolts. If he could use the power of this sword, all the electric attacks would go into oblivion. Kaya turned to the boy. Hayashizaki Kazuki said he was just protecting his comrades. These words touched Kaya. Beatrix Bongart says they used their tactics. It played into her hands. She wants to put all four of them down in one blow. The girl turns to Hayashizaki Kazuki, saying that she will be serious now, but will the young man be able to stand it? A rematch. Fate is at stake. Beatrix Bongart holds two hefty blades in her hands along with a sword. She exudes ferocity. Kaya tells the young man that the girl has finally become serious. They must deflect all her attacks to prevent her from using high-level spells. Hayashizaki Kazuki understands this. As planned, the boy will have to fend off all attacks by Beatrix Bongart. Others, with their attacks, will knock down the summoning of her spells. The girl attacked the young man with an inevitable speed. The floor collapsed at the place where she hit. Hayashizaki Kazuki managed to dodge. He noticed that the girl had sped up. There is no more fun on Beatrix Bongart's face. She tells the young man that she has seriously accelerated, but will he be able to defend himself now as before? Attack after attack follows. Hayashizaki Kazuki tries to parry, but it has become much more difficult than before. The boy noticed that Beatrix Bongart invokes spells when she is attacked. The girl recites a spell, intending to make a call. Kaya, who is watching the fight, shouts at Amasaki Mio to interrupt Beatrix's call. The girl also sees what is happening, so she does not slow down. A powerful explosion occurred in the place where Beatrix Bongart was staying. Amasaki Mio thought they had won, but no. Kaya shouts to her friend to start a new call and not get distracted. At this moment, the enemy is rushing forward somewhere. Hayashizaki Kazuki is in front of her, 
holding a weapon out in front of him. He thinks about where the girl will rush to. Beatrix Bongart easily ran past the boy. She screams that Hayashizaki Kazuki is too slow. She decided to weed the ranks of their team and starts with Charlotte Lieben Frau. With just one blow, Beatrix Bongart demolishes all the armor on the girl. Lot flew away. Hayashizaki Kazuki rushed to rescue his comrade. No matter how fast she is, the boy must cope with her with the help of forecasting. This overwhelming power does not allow us to do what we have planned. They are fighting with swords when suddenly Amasaki Mio calls out to the boy. She screams for her to eat it and activate the fire wings. Hayashizaki Kazuki screams at her friend that it won't work. Beatrix Bongart still holds her shield in her hand. He plays a major role in her defense. The opponent rushed towards Amasaki Mio. Beatrix Bongart strikes numerous times, shouting at her that her end has come. The enemy deals her a decisive blow, but her blade was stopped by Hayashizaki Kazuki. He put his sword in front of the blade, which stopped the crushing blow. Kaya screams that Hayashizaki Kazuki is an idiot, because he must stop her summoning, even at the cost of his comrades. There is anger and ferocity in Beatrix Bongart's eyes. She activates the first matter. Hayashizaki Kazuki shouts at Amasaki Mio to defend herself. Kaya is not going to watch her comrades being attacked. She shielded Mio and Kazuki with her, spreading her black wings. This was followed by a powerful explosion that destroyed buildings located nearby to the place where the struggle was taking place. The boy shouts for Kaya to pull herself together. She comforts him, saying that everything is fine. The layered armor worked as expected. Hayashizaki Kazuki drooped, because this happened because of him. Kaya calls out to him. She says that if they attack her now, with her magic power, they will most likely be able to kill Loki. The boy can't do that, because Kaya is their friend now. The girl laughs, saying that Kazuki is still as naive as everyone else. Arrival approached the three guys. Beatrix turns to Loki. She wants to tell him something. Hayashizaki Kazuki thought it was Beatrix Bongart, but no. Kaya informed him that it was Thor's voice. Thor tells Loki that hunting him was not part of his plans. Kaya says he knew about it. If Thor had attacked with full force, he would have been exhausted by now. The king of the gods was preparing to talk to them. Loki shouts to Thor that he has no desire to talk to him. Every time he met with them, he was condemned, mocked. They dishonored Loki. He yells that after killing the idiot Heimdall and the ostentatious Odin, Thor was there. He tells him that he thought of Loki as a friend. A former friend asks him to shut his mouth. After all, he was the giant of Jotunheim. That's what Loki hates. Hayashizaki Kazuki turns to Kaya, but a snake appears under the girl's feet. Kaya reports that she cannot continue the fight. She'll let them know when Loki makes his move. Kaya tells him that as long as they cherish their bond, the team has a chance to win. Hayashizaki Kazuki should know this. Beatrix Bongart noticed that the conversation was over. All the kids have left is despair. The girl is not going to back down. Amasaki Mio called out to the boy. He says we need to find some way to create a gap in Beatrix's defenses and escape. Otherwise, they will all die here. Charlotte Liebenfrau stops Hayashizaki Kazuki, saying that everything is fine. She believes that if she is captured, the others will be saved. Amasaki Mio wanted to interrupt her friend's speech, but she failed. Charlotte Liebenfrau says she always knew about it. The girl believes that all the misfortunes are because of her. Then she sought refuge in this country. Everyone accepted her and began to defend her. However, the black shadow came with her. This can't go on, it will hit everyone. Charlotte Liebenfrau says that from the very beginning she should have died and this time, the girl believes she should give up. Lot goes to Beatrix Bongart. Turning to her friends, Charlotte Liebenfrau says that they did a lot for her, even for a moment, but she was happy. The girl thanks her friends for this, so she said goodbye to them and was already on her way to Beatrix Bongart. She was stopped by Hayashizaki Kazuki, who took her hand and told her not to go. A fate she couldn't live in. As a king, he won't let it happen. Kazuki has already decided. Even if she refuses, only his selfishness will remain. Hayashizaki Kazuki, like King Solomon, won't let her suffer. Regardless of what others think, Charlotte Liebenfrau also has the right to be happy. He will protect her and get rid of the black shadow. Looking into her eyes, Hayashizaki Kazuki asks her not to go. Lot screams and asks why he says that he will protect her even in such a situation. Why is he trying to do the impossible? She asks why Kazuki is giving her hope and what he expects from her. Hayashizaki Kazuki approached the girl, placing his hands on her shoulders. He touched his lips to hers. The boy wants to protect her. The kiss of the elf. Putting your life on the line to protect someone you care about. The boy says he won't let Charlotte Liebenfrau talk about it anymore. He knows the truth about him, who has learned the taste of power as well as the fullness of suffering. Hayashizaki Kazuki makes a call. 
His true name is Prometheus. The boy says that this is the true identity of the prophet. Amasaki Mio noticed that Prometheus is from Greek legends. Beatrix Bongard is happy about this. Her gaze became fierce, and she calls what happened fantastic, saying that a heavyweight appeared on the scene. Prometheus was banished from the world of the gods because of his disobedience to Zeus. In exile, he gave people fire and language. Thanks to his gifts, the hope was born that humanity can live in cooperation. The boy activates the synthesis of weapons. Beatrix Baumgart suggests bringing this battle to an end. Two titans are fighting with incredible power. The boy delivers a devastating blow, completely destroying Beatrix Baumgart's armor. She falls lifelessly to the ground. The boy returned to his companions. He hugged Charlotte Liebenfrau, saying that the girl should not worry about anything. They defeated their main opponent, Beatrix Baumgart. The compatibility level increases dramatically, but it can only be used once. Because of a simple kiss, a boy can summon 10th level magic. Liem gave him this ability. In such a situation, there was no other choice. Amasaki Mio is worried about this kiss. She asks Hayashizaki Kazuki if he would kiss her if she were in a similar situation. Her face was flushed with embarrassment. Hayashizaki Kazuki simply and casually says that he has already done it. Amasaki Mio is shocked by this because she does not remember this event. The young man said that it was true, because Mio was on the verge of death. While she was dreaming of a kiss, it had actually already happened. Hayashizaki Kazuki doesn't understand why the girl is so shocked by this. After a short silence, Amasaki Mio tells him to do it right here and now. The girl wants a kiss. Hayashizaki Kazuki did not immediately understand this. Turning around, Amasaki Mio is already asking him. Otherwise, as she says, she won't feel special to him. The boy was a little embarrassed, but understood her request. He came up to her and hugged her and did what she asked. Amasaki Mio blushed at this. Giggling, he says that they are all a team and must protect each other. Hayashizaki Kazuki smiles sweetly after the incident. Charlotte Liebenfrau wants to be allowed to do this too. Lot reached out to Amasaki Mio, saying she would take all the trouble away from Hayashizaki Kazuki. The girl waves her off, telling her to get off. Their wait was interrupted by a girl informing them that the knight's order would not come. All three of them turned to look at her. Lot and Ashikawa came. Hayashizaki Kazuki asked why the president of the student council of the magic division was here. He thought that the girl had come to them to pick up Beatrix Baumgart. The boy wanted to go, but Kagwa stopped him. The president of the student council of the magic division, dressed in combat attire, says that Kazuki was mistaken. She was given a task. Hayashizaki says that he understood everything and said that they would not interfere. Before the knight's order arrived, he offered to help her. Aden Ashikawa apologizes to them, saying it's a little unpleasant. She raises her hand, activating the deep spectrum. The shark she wanted to use to attack the illegal magician appears. The president of the student council of the magic division repeats her words that she was given a task. The task of arresting illegal magic users is Hayashizaki Kazuki and Charlotte Liebenfrau. At a special leadership meeting, Lisa Westwood asks why senior management went to such lengths as arresting Kazuki and Lot. She screams that the risk from a boy with an unidentified diva is low. The management reports that while he is weak, they could just watch from the sidelines, but now they can no longer wait. They received a report that the boy had illegally acquired a sacred weapon. He also resisted the knights. Lisa Westwood does not believe this report, saying it is impossible. The management respects the professor, so they decided to believe in the student under her care. At the moment, Kazuki remains a problem confined to the school. By transferring Lot and surgically removing the stigma from Kazuki, they will resolve this issue. She asks the management the question of what damage the nervous system will suffer, and whether they are thinking about how the relationship of the Pillars of Solomon will change towards them. Laughing, the man calls the conversation about a 15-year-old child, who is Bazilski, absurd. The personification of Lemmigeton, as the man says, is just a lie of a man who wanted to become a king in his dreams. The management asks to be allowed to arrest Hayashizaki Kazuki. After that, when they remove the stigma, they will be able to find out her true identity. Lisa Westwood thinks it's weird. There is an unnatural atmosphere in the room. At first, the professor thought that this was someone's plan but perhaps it was just bottomless anger at someone who bears the name Bazilska. In this case, the professor thinks that Hayashizaki Kazuki and Charlotte Liebenfrau can still escape. There is a fierce struggle between the boy and the president of the student council of the magic division. She gave him a blow that made his legs feel heavy. The girl sucked all the magic power from the left side of his body in one attack. 
Hayashizaki Kazuki shouts to the girl that this is a misunderstanding and he does not understand why Otanashi Kagwa is doing this. The president of the student council of the magic division turns to him and asks him to be a good boy. Huge shark jaws appeared under his body, which were ready to devour Hayashizaki Kazuki. Amasaki Mio and Charlotte Liebenfrau did not stay away. They activated and combined their attacks. Charlotte screams for Hayashizaki to do it now, but no one has time to do anything. Only Otanashi Kagwa directed a feeling of pain at the girl. She flew off in the other direction. Charlotte Liebenfrau, sitting on the ground, feels pain and thinks that this is an illusion. The president of the student council of the magic division informs Lot that when she arrests her, the girl will die at the hands of Germany. She would like to give her a chance to escape, but they get in her way. Otanashi Kagwa's attention was distracted by Hayashizaki Kazuki, who screams and asks the girl to stop already. He struck her, but she cast a spell that gives a curse and shares the common agony between the two. The boy is twisted in pain. He is on his knees in front of the unshakable Kagwa. The young man clutched his stomach after he inflicted damage to the girl in the same place. The president of the student council of the magic division approached the boy. Placing her hands on Hayashizaki Kazuki's face, Kagwa lifted his head so that he looked into her eyes. The girl recited the spell massacre. While the boy was writhing in the most severe pain, the girl went to Amasaki Mio, asking what she was going to do. Otanashi Kagwa realizes that the girl intends to fight her for the sake of the boy. Mio confirms her guesses. The boy realizes that there is still a way to survive. He reaches for his blade, hoping that he will knock out Otanashi Kagwa with one blow. However, the legs of an enemy appeared in front of his face, which, as if under the influence of hypnosis, seeks to eliminate illegal magic users. Hayashizaki Kazuki asked why she had gone so far. Botanashi Kagwa repeats the massacre spell. The boy writhed in pain again. She apologizes to him, saying that this is the end. The end of their sweet dreams. She will end this era with a rising level of compatibility with these divas. The plan of the president of the student council of the magic division did not come true. A huge wall of ice formed. This was done by Hikari Kyuk, who came to the aid of her comrades. The girl activated the moving field. She shouts at Hayashizaki Kazuki to take the girls and run away from here. They can't let her win. They were stopped by Odanashi Kagwa, who made a tentacle call. She realized that Hikari Kyuk was eavesdropping. The president says that he would never have thought that Kyuk could do such a mean thing. However, this is not the best solution, as Kagwa says. If she doesn't do it, Hayashizaki Kazuki will really become a criminal. Hikari Kyuk screams that this is not the case and there must be another way. She doesn't want to lose anyone else. Defending herself, the girl reactivates the wall of ice. Otanashi Kagwa remarks that it would be better to be a little simpler if Kyuk is so important to Hayashizaki Kazuki. Kyuk, continuing to fight, scoffs and says that Kagwa is only pretending to keep his cool. That's not all. She shouts to the president of the student council of the magic division that it was Kagwa who shed tears after accepting the assignment. Otanashi Kagwa activated the massacre spell on Hikari Kyuka. Hayashizaki Kashuki was behind her, with Amasaki Mio on his back. She caught a girl screaming in pain. Otanashi Kagwa says no one wanted to do this. No one but her. Her scream was interrupted by another girl who called Kagwa an evil magical stigma. She informs that, as long as she is here, the girl will not allow her to do this. Hayashizaki Kazuki recognized the voice. Hikita Kohaku has arrived to help the guys, who will put up full resistance to Otanashi. Urasama's trusted drifter, the president of the student council of the magic division was blinded by a bright light. Hayashizaki Kazuki realized that Hikita Kohaku also has a sacred weapon. The girl screams, so that the boy runs away while they are not visible in the fog. The boy realized that he needed to run away, but did not know where. Kohaku shouts for the young man to run with the girls to the guys from the faculty of swordsmen. The president of the student council of the magic division was left alone. It began to rain, and the girl was left all alone. Sitting down on the ground in despair, she repeats the name of Hayashizaki Kazuki. Hikita Kohaku asks the boy if everyone is here. The young man confirms, adding that the girls were sent to rest to recuperate. The girl apologizes, saying that one room is available and she will have to put up with the cramped space. The boy asked Kohaku about how she found out about this. Suhara Hisataba approached them, saying that he had received a message from Lisa Westwood. He has said before that an unnatural force is trying to manipulate him, although it seems that she can't do much. Suhara Hisataba, unfortunately, cannot help Hayashizaki Kazuki as he himself needs his help. After hearing that the magic faculty wanted to take Charlotte's life, they officially announced at the student council meeting that the fencing faculty would resist this by force. With this, distrust of the magic faculty will grow. 
At this time, they seized power over the knights. Hayashizaki Kazuki realized that they wanted to start a war with the magic faculty. Seven sacred instruments. Kohaku carries all the family treasures collected over the generations. The rest of the comrades will also be equipped with sacred weapons provided by Tsuhara Hisataba. Hikita Kohaku says they've been saving up for this moment. Now it's time to make a move under the flag of justice. Suhara Hisataba, adjusting his glasses, reports that with this they will most likely be able to get rid of the rotten magic faculty, and the attitude towards the country's swordsmen will change. They would like Hayashizaki Kazuki to cooperate with them, although judging by his face, it would be impossible. As they leave, Suhara Hisataba and Hikita Kohadu inform them that they would like the boy to look at the revolution as their prisoner. Before the eyes of Hayashizaki Kazuki, a Lemageddon materialized, which calls this situation sadness for good. Despite the threat of external aggression, everyone begins to show their discontent, and a war begins between the faculty of swordsmen and the magical parts of this academy. Lim became disillusioned with what is called humanity. The boy thinks that, piece by piece, the magic faculty, the student council and the faculty of swordsmen make up the integrity of the academy. It is about unity. If everyone propagates their ideology, there will be casualties. Hayashizaki Kazuki addresses Lim, saying that the power of the king lies in the fact that he can unite power. Lamageton realized that the king intended to use her. The question is how the boy will prove to the other pillars of Solomon that he is worthy to be king. He has neither the strength nor the determination. However, even so, he wants to protect Mio and Lot, as well as Kagwa, Kyuk and Kohaku. Besides, there are other things he wants to protect no matter what. There is no other way to avoid casualties. Not just the magic faculty, but also the faculty of swordsmen, as well as others. Hayashizaki Kazuki will unite the academy and become its king, like a swordsman from the magic faculty. It's been two days since Kazuki's arrest warrant was issued, but there's no news from the magic department. Tarazu thought that the president would follow his feelings and disobey orders. She has some thoughts in mind. Even though someone is manipulating the swordsman's faculty from the shadows, they can't wait for the magic faculty to move forever. In that case, they should keep an eye on Kohaku and locate Hayashizaki Kazuki. They, as members of the student council from the faculty of swordsmen, will conduct their own independent investigation. There is someone trying to manipulate Hayashizaki Kazuki. Kani intends to find this man as soon as possible. Ikara Kyuk had a dream. When she was three, the signs began to show, one after the other. She turned into an elf. Due to the fact that the mother did not believe that she was her child, Hikara Kyuk began to consider herself a monster in the flesh. The family turned away from the girl and she accepted the fate of an eternal loner and lived like that for 12 years of her life. When she was 14 years old, Kyuk received an enigma. It seemed to her that she had received a reason for existence. Even so, for people, she was just a weapon that they wanted to force to fight. After entering the academy, at the Faculty of Magicians, Hikara Kyuk met people whom she could look at as comrades. Aten Ashikaga was the one who wasn't afraid of her. The president of the student council of the Faculty of Magic warmly welcomed the newcomer to the witch hut, pinning her hopes on her. Hayashizaki Kazuki. Due to the fact that he was an orphan, Hikara Kyuk could not hide her loneliness from him. He said that although the girl was a little rude, her kindness was irreplaceable for him. Amasaki Mio is very similar to Hikara Kyoyuk. She uses her talent in magic as a basis for self-expression, just like the girl herself. Neo told her that she would prove that she was worthy of being in the A rank and defeat her. When Hikara Kyuk thinks about them, the girl clings to the end to that hook of hope that she may be able to become a close friend to them. The girl standing behind Kyuk asks her if she wants to come back. They are surrounded by a white void. Hikara Kyuk expressed her wish that she wanted to return to the witch hut. In response, the girl smiled and told her to go back to where everyone is. When she opened her eyes, Kyuk realized that the ceiling was completely unfamiliar to her, as well as the room in which she was located. Turning around, the girl saw that Hayashizaki Kazuki was stuck with Amasaki Mio and Charlotte Liebenfrau, who were licking his face. Everyone was stopped by the question of what they were doing. Hayashizaki Kazuki turned towards Kyuk. Hikara descended on them like a giant who asks for an explanation of the current situation. Charlotte Liebenfrau said that they went to a cosplay cafe earlier, and takes the blame for it. The boy told Kyuka about the whole situation. In other words, the girl says, they were placed here according to their plan. Therefore, the swordsmen do not help them out of the kindness of their hearts. Hayashizaki Kazuki reminds that this does not mean that they are unable to escape. But if they leave this place now, they may be in danger. Ikara Kayoyuk says she has no interest in the rivalry between the magic faculty 
and the swordsman faculty, or anything like that. She also thought that defeating Aden Ashikawa was just a pipe dream. Her magical potential, techniques and coordination with the diva are all at the highest level. The young man thought that Hayakari was superior to Kagwa in magical potential. The magical potential of Atanashi Kagwa is very high. She feels that she is developing it quite quickly, even though she was born without it. Neo thought it was the same as being born with him. There are many guesses about this. Techniques for expanding magical abilities are being developed in secret, using science to change the human spirit to increase magical power. Hayashizaki Kazuki had heard something similar before. Suddenly, the boy remembered that he still hadn't thanked Hikari Kyuk. Looking into her eyes, he says thank you for saving them. Hamasaki Mio and Charlotte Liebenfrau did not stay away. They also thank Kyuk for coming to the rescue. Turning away from the embarrassment, Hikara says it's not because she wanted to save them or anything like that. She allegedly just didn't know what to do with Kagwa. The girl does not understand the morality of people and thinks that she does not deserve these thanks. Amasaki Mio muttered at her, saying that it would be better to just accept these thanks honestly. In any case, Kyuk is always at the right time and in the right place. Mio thinks Hikara is watching the boy. The girl did not answer the question and looked away. A ferocious Amasaki Mio appeared behind her, noticing that she looked away. Hikara Kayuyu casually calls it a coincidence. The young man says that Kyuk is just a calm person, so she is able to instantly detect danger. After she saved his life so many times, he does not consider it an exaggeration that the girl has become a hero for him. Hikara Kayuyuk was embarrassed and said that he was exaggerating after all. Amasaki Mio and Charlotte Liebenfrau stuck to Hayashizaki Kazuki, saying that they are also always ready to save him. Kyuk informs, in other words, that she is in a closed room with three dreamers. Amasaki Mio snaps back, asking who she called dreamers. Hayashizaki Kazuki smiled, saying that there is, that is. He thinks it's probably disturbing to be in the same room with a guy. The young man swears by the Hayashizaki style that he will not do anything strange with Hikara Kayuyuk. Since there are other girls here, the guy asks to feel at ease. Kyuk asked me not to worry about it. She is more worried that the girls will behave inappropriately in his presence. Amasaki Mio angrily jumped up after these words. She says that there is no such girl who will do something obscene before the wedding. Kyuk asks not to talk nonsense. Lot asks Kazuki what they are talking about, but it's better for her not to know about it. Hayakara Kyuk says that with such people surrounding Hayashizaki Kashuki, it is difficult to see anything but bad inclinations. She wonders why the maid costumes are. Mio says Kazuki likes it. The boy said he didn't have any specific tastes. Amasaki Mio reported that Hikita Kohaku brought it, as the clothes were prepared in advance. The girl thinks the maid costume is pretty good. Hayashizaki Kazuki believes that Kohaku left the costumes as an apology for locking them in this room. There is also a maid costume for Hikari Kyuk. He handed her the outfit, telling her to hurry up and change her clothes. The girl replies that if someone like her wears a maid costume, it will look indecent. She also added that everything is fine and they can continue without her. Hayashizaki Kazuki approached Hikari Kayoyuka, ordering her to finish with her someone like me. The young man does not understand how many more times he has to tell her that she is beautiful. Kazuki tells her that the maid costume will go perfectly with her beautiful skin and shiny silver hair. Hikara Kyuk asks to let her go and not get so close to her. The young man apologized in embarrassment, and at this time Leem says that the king sometimes gets too hot when dealing with a woman who is very timid by nature. It will be better if he shows a calming behavior. Lamageddon continues to tell him that from Kyuk's words it is clear that the girl is trying to keep her distance from others. Hikara Kyuk decided to ask about other clothes, but Amasaki Mio again convinced her that there were only made costumes. The confused girl realizes that she has no choice. She believes that the appearance of the monster maid will surely shock the guys. Ikara Kayuyuk finished changing her clothes. He pulls his skirt down to cover some places. She has bunny ears on her head. She asks permission to wear them. Charlotte Liebenfrau furiously shouts that a girl should wear them. Hayashizaki Kazuki tells Hikari Kayuyuk that she looks very cute. This suit suits her very well, but the girl considers it flattery. However, while the four of them were having fun, the situation outside changed dramatically. Kohaku and Kenny. If the situation doesn't get worse while the guys are inactive, it will be great. The calm before the storm, the black shadow is advancing. Hikita Kohaku is informed that all doors and windows are locked. The girl says that, in that case, that's it for today. Kenny came up to them, saying that she had checked the surveillance cameras and noticed that the guys had recently started coming here too often. 
Although Kani wanted to check the place, the lock was changed without her knowledge, and the girl was unable to open the door. Despite this, the president of the fencing division student council wants to know what Kohaku and Suhara are planning at this place. She asks the girl where she hid Hayashizaki Kazuki. Kikita Kohaku thought this question from the president was stupid. She recalls that, according to the rules of the faculty of swordsmen, the strongest inherits power. Kohaku continues to talk about this and reminds that even the post of student council president can be transferred through a one-on-one -on -one duel. She says it will be awkward if Kani is defeated at her own game. Hikata reminds Kani that she will no longer be able to serve as president of the student council. The president responds to Hikata Kohaku, calling her a rather arrogant freshman with high self-esteem. The girl shouts at Harugi and Kagura to use the sacred weapon in order to defeat Kani's assistants. The opponent of the president of the student council of the fencing division will be Hikita Kohaku. Kani shouts for Kohaka to be encased in ice Murasama, at which point she uses Kirisama Ranbu, which means a wild dance of cutting rain. The opponent screams to be attacked at a distance of Daotanuki. Hikita Kohaku activates Tenrin Kametachi. This ability is referred to as a cutting vortex. Hayashizaki Kani is wary and understands that she must close the distance, otherwise there will be a bad outcome. Kohaku brought down the death of Teraudachi on her. The girl frees the soul of the sword Asura Ryuden. Hayashizaki Kani was literally pinned to the wall. Ikita Kohaku addresses the president, saying that she is indeed the strongest swordsman. However, she is a swordsman of a bygone era who naively continues to use ordinary swords. The girl promises to create a new era in front of her eyes, in which such pathetic swordsmen as Kani will cease to exist. The president calls Kohaku quite audacious due to the fact that she got her hands on the power of the sacred weapon. Although sacred weapons can be really useful, but a girl will not be able to change the world in this way. Hikita Kohaku proudly says that her mission is impeccable. Kani taunts her, explaining that despite the name mission, the girl just wants to run the swordsman's faculty. If someone like her decided to rely on the power of the sacred weapon, he would have no chance of defeating Otanashi Kagwa, even if he fought her 10,000 times. If this happens, relations between the faculties will take a dangerous turn. In order to prevent this from happening, the president of the student council of the fencing division will stop Hikita Kohaka to prevent waste of skills. The girl screams that Kani is a loser, who, despite the fact that she is not able to lift a finger at her, continues to lecture her from her pedestal. Kohaku is going to strike by calling Kani a president with a brother complex. Using the art of drawing a sword and attacking in one move, Hayashizaki Kazuki stopped Hikita Kohaku's strike. The attacking girl was surprised. The president of the student council of the fencing division was able to repel Tarautachi with the help of Ei. Kani shouts at her rival, saying that she cannot see the goodness of Hayashizaki's faces, so she speeds up the pace. The president shouts, fending off her attacks, Hikita Kohaku, that in her condition it is quite brazen to say such things. The girl realizes that Kani is fast. This man is hiding his true strength until now. Rather, maybe because she is not equipped for serious combat, she needs time to gain her full speed. However, Kohaku has a sword capable of reversing the cause. She recites the spell Tsukikage no Takai. It means Moonblade. The president of the fencing division student council easily moved behind Kohaku, asking if she was giving up. Harugi activated the release of the soul of the Torin Jin sword, which dealt a crushing blow to Kani's back. Looking away, the president saw that Tarazu and Iori had been defeated by Hikita Kohaku's henchmen. She grinned as she fell. Kani thought she wouldn't make it in time. However, she found this battle interesting. Kohak was approached by his partner, asking if she was okay. The girl looks at Kani and thinks about hiding the thirst for murder and fighting not seriously. She considers this man even more of a sword demon than Kazuki. Hikita Kohaku recalls the words of the president of the student council of the fencing division that the girl would not be able to defeat Kagwa. Anyway, this is her victory. Amasaki Mio, 130, 4 points, Charlotte Liebenfrau, 102 points, Hikari Kyuk, 53 points, Hashikazi Hayakara, 41 points, and Atanashi Kagwa's level of sympathy can no longer be measured. There's nothing to be done, after all, now the president of the student council of the magic division is the opponent. Hayashizaki Kazuki wondered if Kagwa was as lonely as it was said. He doesn't understand how a good mentor became an enemy. Suddenly, the boy stopped thinking about it. Hayashizaki Kazuki now needs to regain his resolve and then return to the old days. After a while, they said that there were only two sets of bedding. 
Amasaki Mio wanted to place Hikari in another place, but the girl rejected it. Location is important, so tonight, the boy will sleep between Charlotte Liebenfrau and Hikari Kyuk. The girl says that Hayashizaki Kazuki should sleep further away from everyone else and Kayuk will sleep with him as a barrier. She considers it the most decent arrangement. Otherwise, Mio and Lot would have done something obscene to him. Amasaki Mio was outraged by her friend's words, reminding her that she was not going to do something obscene with Hayashizaki Kazuki. Amasaki Mio and Charlotte Liebenfrau stayed away. At this point, Hikara Kyuk gets into bed. Having laid down, the girl and Hayashizaki Kazuki found themselves facing each other. They were both embarrassed by the situation. The boy wanted to say something, but Kyuk abruptly turned away from him. She asked him not to stare at her like that. Hayashizaki Kazuki apologized and said that the girl looked very different when she was so close. He also told Charlotte Liebenfrau and Amasaki Mio to go to bed early too. Hikita Kohaku knocks on the door, which wakes up Hayashizaki Kazuki. The girl informs them that they have things to do, so she has to wake the boy up. In the light of the sunlight streaming into the room, Hayashizaki Kazuki woke up to hear Kohaku's voice. She came earlier than usual. This makes it clear to him that something must have happened. The young man wanted to get up, but realized that there was some kind of barrier in the form of a sleeping Hikari Kyuk, who stuck to his arm. He believes that the girl in the dream confused his hand with a soft toy. He stretches out his hand, wanting to push the girl slightly to ask her to move over. Suddenly, the girl started sucking the boy's finger like a baby pacifier. Hayashizaki Kazuki was stunned by what she was doing. He was so taken aback that he swallowed his tongue and did not know what to do next in this situation. Ikara Kyuk woke up and the guy says it's cute the way she put them. He doesn't mind, of course, but asks the girl to move her legs. Realizing the whole situation, the girl blushed. She shouts at him, saying that she does not understand what good the young man found in this. At this moment, Charlotte Liebenfrau tries her best to wake up Amasaki Mio, who resists, saying that she will not get up without a kiss from the prince. Waking up, the boy leaves the room to Hikito Kohaku, apologizing for the long wait. The girl turned in disbelief to the guys who left the room. She says she heard someone screaming from the room. Hayashizaki Kazuki, rubbing the back of his head, says that a lot has happened. At this moment, Hikari Kyuk is standing with his back to Hikado Kohaku. The boy concluded that something had happened. Hikado Kohaku revealed that Kani had lost to her. The president's subordinates were suspended from classes for committing robbery and were sent to their rooms. As it is now known, the school council of the faculty of swordsmen, which the young man knew, no longer exists. Hayashizaki Kazuki says that, in the end, there will be someone whom Kohaku will not be able to defeat, even with a sacred weapon. The boy reminds her that now is not the time for petty skirmishes. Once something like this has happened, Hayashizaki Kazuki realizes that he can no longer sit and wait. He wants to do something if the girl doesn't listen to him this time. Turning away from the boy, Hikado Kohaku says that he still cannot understand the reason for the boy's insistence, but this is probably something that the girl will not be able to decide on. Hikado Kohaku, still standing with her back to the young man, informs him that there is someone she wants him to meet. Hayashizaki Kazuki asked her about it, and the girl gave a positive answer to the question. The girl wants the young man to meet the one who controls them behind the scenes. Lonely, sitting, waiting. His real identity.